No. And we're going. It's one of those. It's it's the Ron Swanson thing. Like, bring me all the bacon and eggs you have. And the waiter's about to walk. He's like, stop right there. <laughs> what you heard was bring me a lot of bacon and eggs. What I said was bring me all the bacon and eggs that you have. That's how you got to go in. But like, I need. I, no, no, no. Not. Google 588. I want Google 12,000. Yeah, I basically want to run a plug from wherever the internet is in Maine, like wherever the source is. And I just want mm -hmm. to run that plug directly to my computer. Yeah, just put it in the backyard. I don't see, yeah. I don't see why not. Uh, but alas, hey, it's the Mick Man. That's right. What's up, fella? How you feeling, pal? I can't complain. Yeah, you know, I got, I'm. Sitting here with a pal, I've got balloons to my back. Always, I always see. The best of time, I see. Someone turned twenty three. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not, Jordan not year. I, I'm one. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> Jordan year. Had to have you on. Always good to see you. But alas, Norm Macdonald died. Yeah, surely, surely we can uh, start reconvening when when people are alive and well. No. <laughs> It's like this. I kind of like it's like on some Batman Joker shit. Uh, <laughs> how bad do y'all really? Or just another person out of here. Uh, They'll be dropping like flies. Uh, I'm yeah. just saying. So I kind of like playing God. Um, <laughs> but a lot, yet I digress. Um, no, Norm McDonald, someone that I mean, you and I have talked about for a long time. Uh, like legit, I've been watching him since he started SNL ninety four. I wasn't watching it then. That's absurd. I don't think I started to like ninety six, right? Like ninety six or so. Um, he's the best weekend update host I've ever seen what to I this day. Um, Two two's gonna be Quinn, right? You, he had to grow on me. I I didn't. I just didn't. I was like, I don't like this guy. I don't. I just don't. <laughs> he's uh, we'll call him rough around the edges. He, yeah, and there's a lot of edges. Um, oh, yeah, but he now nah, he he grew on me. The 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 straight man grew on me. But I think we can all agree that Norm is first, and that Jimmy uh, Fallon is last. I think Jimmy <laughs> Fallon is definitely last. I don't care what the list is we're ranking. I've got <laughs> Fallon last every time. Yeah, I he. he He's like the worst Jimmy Fallon. I don't even know any other Jimmy Fallon. So he's like the worst Jimmy Fallon. But again, I digress. We we're talking about funny comedians. It's true. Uh, Norm, when you think Norm, what do you think of? Like, originally funny. Like, I feel like there's a lot of comedians... Every comedian tries to find their own lane and find their own voice. But if you listen to all of them talk they're like yeah when i was starting out i saw seth rogan tweet out like yeah right. when i was starting out i was basically doing a bad norm mcdonald impression right and i i was kind of surprised how many people i saw boiling him down to being like a deadpan comedian because like yeah i guess technically he is but like when i think deadpan i think like mitch hedberg i think uh stephen wright i right. like i feel like norm what like I always just thought of him as kind of like a sarcastic prick, like not necessarily it, deadpan. I, I feel like if you're saying you think of deadpan for Norm, it's like saying, uh, I think passing when I think LeBron. It's like, that guy's about to score 40,000 points. Uh, you know, he can pass. Right. He is really good at it. Uh, right. But don't miss the 30 points a night. And the fact that he, like, weekend update, the family guy, I think he was the, was, was it to go from Corolla to him or him, him to Corolla, right? For the for voice death. of death. Yeah. yeah. And Dirty Work. Mm -hmm. Dirty Work was the class. Dirty Work, him leaving SNL and hosting the ESPYs was all 98. So a hot 98 for Norm. A hot 98. Uh, getting banned from... Did you, <laughs> did you see the rumor that King Griffey Jr. had him banned from the ESPYs after parties? No, but that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
the the infamous it reminds me of like Mr. Burns being like kill the Rolling Stones and it's just the Ramones. Like Griffey had no idea who it was. He was like, I tell Dana Carvey to hit yeah. the bricks. I want Carlin out of here, man. Uh, <laughs> but apparently it was the uh the infamous the Charles Woodson win in the Heisman. Uh, you know, they, they can't take that away from you unless you kill your wife uh, and a waiter. And apparently Griff wasn't too fond of that one. No. And apparently had Norm MacDonald banned from the after party that the award show he hosted, <laughs> which is very Norm MacDonald. I, that really shows the power Griffey had in the 90s. Oh, God. Listen, he could have had him killed. Definitely. I don't think Griffey knows people can be killed, but if he did, yeah, Norm would have been out of here a long time ago. Yeah, he's like, listen, that that's what that means when people do that. Damn. I thought I meant ban. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm feeling the vibes. Uh, like the Bob Saget roast. I'm just trying to think of like the whatever moments come to mind for Norm. Um, the the Saget roast, I think, is a great just like comedy litmus test for for mm. people like if because like that crowd did not get it like that was not <laughs> well, I, there <laughs> i watched it again yesterday there is one guy yeah don i think he gets it right off the bat and he it's it's got to be like he's the designated driver like in a drunk he's like the only one he's falling over his table and Norm's just like looking at Cloris Leach. Like, <laughs> well, that's the like all the comedians on the dais get it. Like right. they they're they're crying it, because no like Norm loved nothing more than a crowd who like doesn't know what's happening. Like <laughs> late night crowd, any crowd that's just like what was that supposed to be a joke? He's like, oh, I've got you right the right joke. Right yeah. No, go on. I thought you were saying more. Oh, did I freeze again? That could have happened. Uh, yeah, you froze. Yeah. Awesome. I'm hearing echoes, saying, man. This, right? is, this is the old time. Damn. Yeah. It's uh, when when he had a crowd that didn't quite understand, it's like, yeah, I've got you right where I want you. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's where he loved to be. It felt like, obviously. I mean, me and him haven't spoken in several years. And yeah, uh, so I, I don't. I'm glad you two like, patched it up. But uh, in the nick of time. Yeah, not a moment too soon. Uh, but I'm trying to. There was one major. The uh, yeah, the one, the, the one guy. He's absolutely dying. Picked it up as as soon as saw the pitch. As soon as he left his hand, John Stamos has no idea what the <laughs> fuck. <he's doing. laughs> John, he's like, man, this guy's eating shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, he's a ladies' man. Me, same me, no. <laughs> Oh, I'm a one woman man. No, uh, no. He was like, uh, uh, what did he say about Stanos? He was like, he was, uh, he's a swinger. He was born uh, not with an umbilical cord, but with a bungee cord. And Stanos was like, no, no, it was an um umbilical cord. No, no, it was like, definitely oh. standard umbilical. Uh, let's move us on. Uh, Cloris Leachman, him just staring at her and just nodding, like, mm hmm. And then just go, next card. Who else? I mean, he felt like he was doing like, like a, a Bob Hope impression. Like he was, he was like every time I I I think of the Comedy Central roast, he's holding a golf club, but he isn't. Like I just picture him <laughs> holding a golf club. Uh, Mandela effect. Yeah, he's just holding yeah. the club. Yeah, but I, when he calls him a dog face. Uh, <laughs> cauliflower he's like we, we saw the lions play the who did he say the lions, the lions play the uh, the bears <laughs> bob saga showed up with a double barreled shotgun <laughs> you remember that bob he's like oh yeah <laughs> yeah yep doesn't miss a beat yep <laughs> uh 2019 was it yep <laughs> I, I feel like the thing with no only one only he could do his jokes like I feel like they're all, like for the most part, everybody can only do their joke. But some stuff is funny. Regard only Norm could do his jokes. One and two, I feel like he's the only comedian, maybe ever. If you take the crowd out of it, I don't think you could tell if he was bombing or not. Like no. that's the it's just going the same way, right? And yeah. he's fine with it. It's going the way he wants it to go. 
You could take you could put laugh track in, you could take it out. It wouldn't make a difference at all. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm curious if he ever thought he bombed because yeah, like in his mind, he was like, "No, I know all that was funny. I don't care what they thought. Like, I yeah. know it was funny. <laughs> I hope a couple of them thought it was. Fun. I mean, they paid. I hope they thought it was funny, but <laughs> him. Uh, I was shocked how many people like only knew him from the moth joke. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like he had a like a sitcom. He like Norm had a lot on the. Oh yeah. On the resume, did he not do so? Did he do some writing for like something like something he was not on? Or am I making he that did. up? No, he did. Let me look it up because I remember reading that and being like, "Oh, I had no idea." Yeah, like one of uh, like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, like some sort of some sort of <laughs> <laughs> Good Times. Norm McDonald was the lead writer on Good Times. Let's let's see what he's credited for as a writer. Actually, now you know what. That's the beauty of StreamYard. Let's see what he is credited as. Oh, true. Oh, Roseanne. Roseanne's what I was thinking of. Yeah, okay. I think that's what it, it was. I was like, something big, but he wasn't on it. No. Um, let's see. There he is. Uh, I don't think he gets a handsome devil in his younger oh, day. Yeah. Full head of hair. We're going to miss him at the ball. Um. Also, it's been said, but very norm to have cancer for about a decade and tell no one until it's <laughs> exactly very, true. very norm. McDonald. His friends and family are like, what? What do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> his wife's like, you kidding me? Um, yeah, we're just looking at Norm's uh, <laughs> personal life. He has a paragraph about gambling addiction, which is mm -hmm. usually a good sign. It's got a lot of numbers in it, so I'm not going to be reading that. No. But. Yeah, like Norm McDonald. I've never. Have you ever watched Norm McDonald has a show? I the feel Netflix? like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have. He had on like some random get. Like I want to say, he had some like terribly old white lady, like not Betty White, but someone in the oh, Betty boy. White like cinematic universe, like one sure. of the, one of those types. And I was just like, this is the funniest. Like it was, it, <laughs> it was situationally funny. Like he was still funny, but like just. The people he had on it because he yeah that that was relatively new and mm. like i feel like netflix always anytime they have something new like they plaster it on the front page and even <laughs> me who watches pretty much only stand up on there like had to like dig and find it right yeah that's it's one of those like he for a guy of his like resume it's like uh, uh maybe i mean top billing um but yeah i haven't watched it i've Probably will watch it now. It'll do a lot of good now. Uh, me watching yeah. it, uh, just like I listened to that. What's the name of the album? I think it's just me doing stand up. Yeah, yeah. The name of the album is me doing stand up. Where <laughs> the <laughs> the first track is uh, "Good to Be Alive," <laughs> <laughs> and the <laughs> and the second track is what yeah. Was it? <laughs> yeah, battling cancer or conquering cancer or something like that. And I wonder, like that came out twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. He had this for like a day. Like I, I feel like he knew. I do. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I thought too. Because there was also, uh, well, his dad. He, he talks about his dad's death too, which was a heart attack. And he, he's, he what was he? He was talking about uh, terrorist attacks, and then he was just like, There's "Very little chance you're gonna die of a plane crash." But. <laughs> A very high chance your own heart will kill yeah, you. Those, the, the plane's not going to attack you. Your heart almost certainly will. <laughs> that's uh, that's almost one percent. You're a hundred percent. He talks about uh, how Tiger Woods was the most loyal husband of all time. Like that killed me. Statistically, <laughs> if you consider the woman he cheated with versus the ones he didn't cheat with, statistically he didn't cheat at all. <laughs> He was like, I might get 10 opportunities to cheat. I, I do it one time. That's 10%. He did it 80-something times out of millions. That's almost 0%. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Hold on. Hold on. I got to put this on the big screen. I just saw a video. It says, uh, it's from a YouTube account that says, I'm not Norm. Yeah. Which checks out. It does not appear to be Norm. And it said... 
Where the hell is it? Where the, yeah, where the video what? say? <laughs> I've never seen someone be like, I found a video. Let me scroll YouTube aimlessly. <laughs> <laughs> I copy and paste and it didn't copy and paste. There it is. I'll put it in sports terms. The title is 35 minutes of why Norm McDonald got fired on Weekend Update. But it's from I'm not Norm. I just want to see what uh, maybe two minutes of why Norm got fired. If you've got a minute, Mick. Um, yeah, I'm a no. Why you got fired? You were fucking with OJ too much. That's uh, exactly yeah, I, why you were fired, man. Well, I don't know. That's his that. buddy. Yeah, it's his buddy. Yeah. Well, that's why you got camp. OJ's a good guy. I mean, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Potential jurors for the OJ Simpson case were asked to fill out a 75 page jury questionnaire this week. In the entire state of California, only one person got a perfect score. Chow Ming Wu, who after the trial, plans to attend Caltech. <laughs> By the way, you can now purchase a bronze statue of the juice for only $3,395. And for an even five grand, you can buy one that Al Cowlings has kissed the ass of. <laughs> O.J. Simpson's new fitness video was released this week, and hitting the shelves next week, Simpson's newest video, Dorf on Stocking. <laughs> this, is, this is shallow the water, is man. Torn. <laughs> there, is, there was a 12 and a half video, minute said, video of only him doing OJ jokes from Weekend Update. Like, when you really think about how long 12 and a half minutes is and you see how quickly these jokes are, that's, I don't know, it's a staggering. 200 OJ jokes. <laughs> it's staggering. This is, it's, I'm just clicking through it now, and they're all just. This week tacked on an additional $25 million jump in, here. in punitive damages. On hearing the news, Simpson declared, quote, this is far from over. Asked to clarify that statement, OJ said, quote, I'm going to kill more people. What do you think? Of <laughs> the first place in Weekend Update's most romantic Valentine contest goes to David Delaferra of Kearney, New Jersey. Yesterday, Mr. Delaferra, who works as a fireman here in the city, climbed the ladder of a fire truck up to the third floor office window of his girlfriend, Alexandra. There, with a dozen roses and a wedding ring, he proposed to her in front of all her co-workers. Congratulations, David. And coming in last place for the third year in a row, O.J. Simpson. <laughs> At a book signing in New York this week, Fred Goldman. That's, like it... That's what I love most about Norm. <laughs> like, he'll tell you, uh, and Conan pointed, points it out a lot too, Like he'll tell you this meandering story that has nothing to do with anything just to hit something you like. The mystery, he's, I think he's the best misdirect comic of all time. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. Even then, we we click this video knowing every punchline is about OJ, every single one, and he <laughs> drops it. And I I laugh like I've never heard any of them before. Like once he gets to the and coming in last place, I'm already I'm doing like the Charlie Murphy uh, <laughs> shake, uh, and then he just drops it on you. Just and I like he'll I do love how he will reiterate it like. He, the man killed his wife. <laughs> just, just sit on it for a minute, and then okay, just on to the next one. Uh, so many OJ jokes. Once again, offered to forget the millions owed to him by OJ Simpson if he would simply admit to the Brentwood murders. A visibly annoyed OJ responded, "Why in the world would I do that when I have no intention of paying you anyway?" <laughs> More bad news for OJ. This week, Harper Collins reached an agreement with the Brown family to publish his late wife's diary. Especially troublesome to Simpson is this final entry. Dear diary, I have to run now because OJ is here to murder me. <laughs> and also the guy who returned my glasses. I think he might murder him too. <laughs> Also this week, a California newspaper revealed that O.J. Simpson was awarded custody of his children mainly because a court-ordered psychological test showed that he is a loving father. It should be noted, however, that the same test also showed that he was a loving husband. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> just never breathe. Just never breathe. Try with the camera. Yeah, that shitty husband. It just goes on. <laughs> <laughs> he like there's there's a lot of comedians who, especially if they don't get a big laugh or the laugh they anticipated, like mm. that silence. They just rush to the next thing so quick. Norm was so comfortable in silence and like. It's one of those things too, where the longer he sits in the silence, the funnier it becomes. Right. It's also because he's his is like a legit. You don't know what's coming after this. He might just go back to the same thing he was saying. Right. He might just completely different. So I was fucking my wife in the ass the other day. Like it's, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's a real mixed bag. Uh, right. When he was talking about uh, how sex was shameful, that was on that album. That was killing me. Like, of course it's shameful. You pull down the blinds. Like, you don't do that when you're making a nice pie. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think they made blinds? Uh, <laughs> that the uh, I think my favorite part of the whole stand-up was uh, him talking about the news. It's like, I don't, yeah. I don't like the news. Uh, they show somebody missing, and I'm like, I don't really care because I don't know her. And then they show Janice. And then they it's like, yeah, I like her hair like that. She they show different <laughs> pictures of her. I wish she'd come home. I want to get a drink with it. Where's Janice? And then I become invested. I don't like it because she's missing. <laughs> and, uh, and a few days later, they they cut to the same guy and he's in front of the woods. You never want to see him in front of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never see any good news come from the woods. Uh, yeah. And then he's like, well, they, they found her in a shallow grave. And I thought these serial killers were supposed to be these masterminds. And, they always kind of gloss over the grave part. I, I would take a deep grave. <laughs> it's like I, if I was a police, I tell him search every shallow grave in the country. Uh, <laughs> my work here is done. When he, he was talking about the news, he was like, "When I was a kid, it used to be half a hour every day, half a <laughs> half hour. the hour." <laughs> yeah, and then they made it twenty four hours, and it turns out. You only really need half an hour. Yeah, yeah they had it right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, listen, I, it's on Apple Music uh, list. I mean, we could just go live for like we still may, still may. But I, I feel like I don't know if he gets described this way, like fear, like he's a fearless comedian. But I, like, I know he's winning. Like Bill Maher, if, like if you didn't think somebody's funny, and it wasn't even some hate. He's like, yeah. I, I don't think that guy's funny. He's like, yeah. and you got to do. He's like, he knows his political stuff, but he's got to do a ten things, and they got the camera right there, and this shit's not funny. This shit's weak, and you got to laugh at it. He's like, I don't like that. Uh, he he was he also. I mean, for the two of us uh, with Twitter, like he used Twitter like no one else I've ever seen. He wrote a whole yeah. book on Twitter. I don't know if you were following him when he did that. Um, he just. He just tweeted line for line the whole book he wrote only for Twitter. That was wild. Um, he was all he live tweeted a basketball game. He live tweeted like uh, like Pistons Bucks and like 04. It's just like 11 to 9, 13 to 9, 15 to 9. <laughs> like just entire game. Tweets it. He, yeah, then he was talking about uh, if he were to kill a woman, went in that, that album and he was like, <laughs> They go to the YMCA to play basketball. They can do that now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine now. Uh, <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm not capable of killing a woman. I don't think. I'm not a, I can't see the future. Uh, every, <laughs> every river has a few bends you go long enough. Uh, he had this he had this weird innocence about him that I don't think was earned in any way, shape, or form, but like it's the, I don't know when he's the, like, I can not kill a woman. baby face. It's the yeah, eyes it's and baby like, face. Yeah, it it it's it's something to do with his look for sure. And like he's he was soft spoken. Like I don't hmm. I don't know when I when I think of other comedians, like so many of them are like brash in your especially '90s comedians. Like there was a right. lot of like he, he was coming up d dice clay times. Like it, it <laughs> felt like he he was playing an honest game in the uh, the juice ball. He's Jim Tomy. He's like I don't know, man. I just. <laughs> I just I wake up and I eat a whole potato for breakfast. I eat a whole steak uh, for lunch and dinner, and I just I just hit dingers. I'm not gonna hit seventy of them, but I'll, I'll hit fifty four. Uh. <laughs> There's he had a joke about 
a, like a small town in Canada that he told on Conan and I can't find it. It's like, I just haven't been able to find it. And that's what's hurt me the most these past couple of days. It's, mm. I think it was better than the moth joke. Like I really do like, and did you see him talking about the moth joke? Uh-uh. He was, I, mean, uh, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. It's tube. somewhere. I, it, I, I, he was like sitting up on stage talking about like the origins of the moth joke and, uh, how it wasn't his. Let's uh, do some scrolling here. Yes, yeah, story behind the monk joke. Yeah, here yeah, we yeah. go. Uh, so we're seeing it a little bit in process here, but you know, obviously, uh, we watch you on uh, late night shows. We hear you. I just heard you on Howard Stern. Uh, we watch you on your podcast, and what we find is suddenly we're sucked into the vortex of a nearly nine minute joke. That we have no idea. I just gotta say, Norm got on white socks with this, and it's it's they're like doilies, like it, it, it's ups, upsetting socks, an upsetting sock to say the least. Do you think he ever once Howard thought about what kind of socks he was wearing? I don't think he thought about. It. I feel like they handed him this blazer as he walked up the steps. <laughs> of, he was like, wearing of, sweatpants when he showed up. Yeah, he was. He was like, "Can you at least tie the drawstrings?" And he's like, "I'm not gonna do it," uh, and just walks up there. Uh, or where it will lead and what will happen with it, except that it will be very funny and we'll be trying to get everybody to listen to it the next day. How do you, does that, do you come saying, oh, I have a, I have a well, joke? you mean like a street joke? Like a real street joke? joke? You mean like an actual joke? Well, I, I mean, like the like mom joke, joke or the or, yeah, or Dirty Johnny it. joke. Yeah, I, didn't make, I don't make up those jokes. They're just out there? Oh, have you ever tried to make up a joke? I, I, no comic in the world can make up an actual joke. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a guy walks into a bar and this happens. This takes. This is startling information. Oh, you didn't know that? You no, I happened. thought you were right. You come with these things written down on paper, right? No, no. The, the, you know, they call like a comedian act jokes, but they haven't been jokes for years. You know, it's it, it changed with Alan King to observational uh, comedy. Hmm. You know, like this guy's floored. Yeah, <laughs> he's nodding his head like I'm, I he have is, no idea what comedy is. <laughs> he's like, I, everything is a lie. <laughs> I don't care for Alan. <laughs> well, a lot of America is upset right now because well, there's a huge no, you are. audience. Oh. Yeah, there's one American yeah, except right. Maybe it's Larry King. Um, so, so you're you're dodging this a little bit. So these are old jokes you're stealing from Rich Little. <laughs> Not rich, no, didn't tell jokes. No, but you like the moth joke, for instance. Uh, Colin Quinn told me that joke, and he said, you know, have you ever heard of the moth joke? Meaning it was a famous joke. And I said, no. And he said, a moth goes into a podiatrist's office, and he says, I have terrible problems, doctor, and uh, I think I'm going mad. And then uh, the podiatrist goes, oh, well, that's too bad, moth. But why come <laughs> to me? I'm a podiatrist. You should be going to see a psychiatrist. Why did you come to my office? And the mom says, uh, because the light was on. So that's a this good guy, joke. Yes. But that's not your joke. That's not my joke. <laughs> so, I, so I was on the Conan O'Brien show, and I was going to do one segment. And at the end of the segment, uh, he said, we'll be right back with Norm. More Norm. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I heard, nobody told me anything about no more norm. Right. <laughs> yes, a, I got a game to watch. Uh, look at yeah, I, <laughs> fifty bucks on the Blazers. What are we doing? <laughs> Christmas so I said, uh, I said I don't have nothing to say. <laughs> and then I remember that Colin Quinn. He said, just talk. I remember that Colin Quinn joke, and I, you know, which is about about a twenty second joke. So I said, how long is this segment? Hoping he'd say 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, about seven minutes. You know? <laughs> so I made the joke seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like that, it makes me so happy to hear that because like, it feels like he's telling it in the moment. But we've talked about this with Chappelle in the right. past where right. it's like <clears throat> every time Chappelle tells a joke, it it sounds like he's telling it for the first time, even though it's so fine crap, but right. that's how good he is in the moment. 
Norm yeah. very much was telling this for the first time just to fill a segment. <laughs> he was just like, I got to make those 20 second jokes, seven minutes. So, and he like, I don't think he could have done it on another show because Conan, no. like, Conan knows how to play off that. And right. like, I think Listen, Jay Leno would have Conan- called the police. <laughs> like, <laughs> Letterman, Letterman probably would have been been cool with it. He would have thrown it to Paul, and Paul would have played some zany riff on the piano. But <laughs> I, yeah, Jay Leno would have had Kevin come over and bash him over the head with his guitar. Like, yeah, no, that would have been the like, last you know. episode of Jay Leno. But yeah, the him him just stretching that joke out to seven minutes just because he had nothing else to say. Like, who has nothing to say? That's a that's very funny that he's just like, I got nothing else. I got nothing uh, for you, pal. I don't got no movies coming up. I didn't write a book. I'm not going on tour. I I didn't just have surgery. I didn't go on vacation. Like I, <laughs> it's why it really is why that that was just. I mean, it still is. That's just the entire like night show industry. It's oh, like yeah. so, uh, Vanessa Hudgens. You went on vacation lately, and you just sit there and listen to her go on vacation. Vacation. Maybe she has a movie coming up. Maybe not. I mean, hearing like I listen to Conan's podcast a lot, obviously, but like hearing how like I mean, they, they even talked about it on Entourage, like when when Vince is supposed to be going on Jimmy uh, Kimmel and he's doing like the, the questionnaire with the, the producer ahead of time. Right. Vince is like, I just tell him whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, why, who, why yeah, Vince, does that like makes a good show? <laughs> right. Listen, I got some I got some ace to uh dip and dive in. You handle that, E. Like what like the the the, the whole podcast industry really is killing like because people can go in and fucking uh sell their product and like actually have a conversation now. Like it's not just right. like oh we we're up against the fucking uh crest commercial that we gotta run because that's what pays the bills. Was that an Instagram? It's like Instagram. We know your vacation, and we know when your movie's coming out. Podcast. Right. We can hear like what you want to say. If you've been taking a horse to warmer with uh, Joe Rogan, <laughs> we get to hear that. Uh, <laughs> we get to hear straight from the source. Um, um, I I can't believe what society has turned into. <laughs> really? Re- you can't like- really? I had very little faith in humanity before this, and the little faith I was grasping onto, I've just let go. There's, there's no. If you still the have final faith, straw. I'm not talking to you. the horse stormer. That was the final. That, straw. that was. That was, that was it. That I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Sound like you still can't. I, I'll. I promise you, in front of all these witnesses, I'll never believe that. I listen. It's very believable that people would let's now you take a little a horse dewormer uh, to get rid of a virus that doesn't exist. Okay, all right. That's the thing. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what, what kills me. It didn't <laughs> exist, and now they're actively seeking a medicine for the thing that didn't exist. Look, we've got the medicine, pal. I promise you. <laughs> listen, it's free. Um. You could probably walk in a CVS like tonight, depending on what city you live in. And if they, if they slapped five a five buck charge on there, do you think more people would get it? Nah, I don't think is like I know like the giving it away make people not want. It, but listen, if I told you right now, uh, bring me a gallon of ivermectin, where would you even go? Would you know where to go? I would not. Me personally, I would not. No. So it's like I, I'd call Shaq. I'm sure he sold it at some point. Uh, after that, uh, I'm out of ideas. General Brand Horse Dormer. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't. I have no fucking clue. Like, I don't know how much. Listen, we're gonna see right now. I want to see if we can buy some. Just what? how easy it is to buy. I should say. I'm not buying any. Don't buy a fucking horse dormer. <laughs> Unless you unless you got a horse with worms, yeah, like you get, yeah, filled with worms, yeah. At that yeah point. Shopping, let's see. A, that can't be right. No, Eleven cents. That's just for one tablet. We, that's the one. Plus, yeah, one hundred thirty-five dollars. <laughs> you can get it at Val- 
Valley Vet Supply. Highly effective injectable cattle warmer for the treatment and control of adult liver flukes. Round. No, I need the full. Yeah. <laughs> liver flukes, round worms, lung worms, grubs, lice, and mange mites. Ivermectin injections is for use only in beef and dairy cat. You see how it, do it don't even say uh, COVID-19 in there. Like, it's no, like no, grubs, no, no, no. <laughs> grubs, lice, lung worm. Uh, I would like to point out it has a five star rating. 4.9 out of five to be. I want to let's take a look at these one stars. Somebody's <laughs> like, this is bull. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do I get to? I want only the one stars. 47 minutes ago. Always great experience. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I'm going to check in. Uh, Hour and a half. My husband died 47 <laughs> minutes ago. Uh, here we go. He, he <laughs> Cassidy purchased horse clippers. Um, I don't know what that has and to this do. Is just, this is just a like a general store review. This isn't even about the product. <laughs> just about Valley Vet. This is. I feel like this and the airport are the two things I would tell. If you ever think people are like getting smarter uh, at all. Go to the airport and read reviews of things where they're like, and let me tell you another thing about this uh, microphone. I couldn't find the parking lot. My car ran out of gas. And when I got there, they didn't even have any ivermectin. <laughs> <laughs> like One star. It's like, oh, there's a gas station. Like, what are you? <laughs> the, my favorite is looking up hotels when I'm traveling. And you can you can always <laughs> tell what was written by like, a white person who only ever sees other white people. Like, <laughs> right. like, I, yeah, I, white, I, I know white people, yeah. Yeah, the, the one that sticks out in my brain is I was looking for hotels on Venice Beach. And mm. some of them were like, yeah, the hotel is nice, but there's some shady characters lurking around. And it's like, yeah, homeless people sleep on the beach. Like, that's, <laughs> they don't come up to you. Like, they're fine. You're okay. shady. Yeah, they're black. They're black people. Yeah. The way we use that shady. Uh, uh, they're playing their music a little, a little high for me. It was Friday at three forty-five p.m. What do you? If, if they're playing it Saturday three a.m. Hey, you listen. You got a gripe? If that it was Friday afternoon, what do you? Of course they're playing music. What do you want? Um, three stars. Yeah, do not recommend. <laughs> That and just the airport in general. That just the I have to take off these shoes. The the these, amount of, these. the amount of people we're twenty years past, uh, and whenever the shoe bomber was, that was like oh five or some shit somewhere around there. So it's like a sixteen year rule. The amount of people I still see <laughs> being like, oh, I I have to. Yes, you still have to take. That's forever. That's not. We're not going back. Like oh, I think we're safe from the shoe bomb. Like of course <laughs> not. We're never going back. You have to take those fucking things off. We did recently pass a 20 year anniversary oh. um, of a legend. I've always thought fondly of 9 11, uh, said Bill Morrow. No, Billy Morrow bowled a, a, a perfect game 20 years ago this month. Uh, your thoughts as someone who watched it then and now? I mean, it, it just made me proud. Hmm. Proud it, it for like that belief I told you I just let go of. The only belief I was still clutching on to came from that that perfect three hundred that mm. that Bill Morrow bowled right in the face of, of tyranny and and terrorism. That's that's what he that's what a hero looks like. That that thin lip smile right there. <laughs> this axe wound of a a, a lip. I can't tell if he if he's double hoop. Is this is this double hoop? It could it, it very well could be. He's either got one hoop like uh I don't even know, dude. Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. yeah, or two hoops like Michael Jordan. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Drunk Michael Jordan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he got at least forty five thousand around his neck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um man, I think Man, can you not put the date on the picture? <laughs> like he, does the date, um, you know what I'm saying? Does the date really matter? September. Uh, well, <laughs> even then, I feel like it'd be, oh, yeah, sept September when? 
the eleventh. Oh, come on, Bill. Yeah, you, the day I, of. Like when I think December, I go right to the twenty fifth. When I think September, <laughs> I, my goddamn birthday is in September. I still think of the eleventh first. Like it's you can't say September without going right to right to the eleventh. Yeah, listen, that's what Billy Boy wanted. And as I, I see, I, I think I don't know if these are like tinted shades. The like Billy might have it. Yeah, the tra <laughs> transition frames. And Billy stepped up, and I I just can't believe nobody did the 20 year follow up. Like, what are you thinking that? Like, do you still, like, when you think back about that day, what's the first thing you think of? And he's like, first thing I think of, uh, 710 split that I fucking nailed uh <laughs> in the eighth the second thing i think of um uh, with a thousands of lives our first responders uh, <laughs> the third thing i think no <laughs> yeah him him just like well we got out of work early so might as well hit the lanes <laughs> like i <laughs> What was that? I mean, oh, I mean, I feel like we're safe out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we're in Western Massachusetts. Yeah, listen, so our, in the clear. our World Trade Centers uh, were raised weeks ago. So I think we're all set. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, like, I feel like day of things didn't know whether they were supposed to like close or not. Like, I bet that mm -hmm. bowling alley was closed Wednesday. Like, I they weren't open when probably Thursday either. You think Bill was out front like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's me, my, Bill Morrow. Here's uh, my black, yeah. <laughs> I want to go for two days in a row, Bill. Bill, we're on code orange. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I got to get these stripes out. I'm hot. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Ray Allen's hit eight threes in a row, and he's just like, "What do you mean we can't play for another month?" Yeah, I need overtime, man. I uh, I gotta get some of these makes out. <laughs> this is not related to Ray Allen and that at all, but I just remember the uh, <laughs> the Tiger Woods part from the Norm thing where he was like, "I uh, I don't want the blowjob of my life. I, I want a chicken breast sandwich." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the blowjob to end all blowjobs? No, no, just one chicken breast sandwich. And he was, and he was like the, he was like the women that Tiger got. You know what I'm saying? He can't walk into Perkins with his. What waitress haven't I knocked off yet? Uh, you know they have to approach him. So you know he calls the hotel room service. I like to get a chicken breast sandwich. What? No, I don't want the blowjob to end all blowjobs. Just a sandwich will do. <laughs> pickles, pickles. Can you? Yeah, and a <laughs> he's got another one. I think he's got two albums. I haven't listened to the other one. So the other one I was listening to yesterday, and it's all skits that he wrote. Um, it's not stand up, which caught me off guard. The first mm -hmm. one, was, the first one was about the Fantastic Four, and it's <laughs> it's him as Mister Fantastic telling all the rest of the four what their names are and then <laughs> he's like you're you're the thing you're the invisible woman you are uh the human torch and i'm mr fantastic and then he just tries <laughs> like he tries to move on to the next thing and everyone's like well what what do you mean you're mr you should be mr stretchy or stretch arms or something like that and they keep calling him mr fantastic sarcastically uh <laughs> now that is <laughs> They got a, a, a bum rap, man. I'm Mr. Fantastic in the pips. Yeah, this is my Fantastic Four. And then he, he was like, I already sent it to the paper. That's what they're calling us. And then yeah. Well, editorial written by him. It's, like <laughs> It's already a hashtag. It's kind of a thing. Um, it, we'd be a fool to stop the momentum now. He's like, what are you? Fine, I'll change. I'm Mr. Assface now. I've, yeah. Everyone <laughs> call me Mr. Assface. And they're like, don't do that. We. <laughs> I I I need to listen to that. I did you ever read his book? No. I did I listened to it the audio book and I would recommend it because he reads it. Okay. I that makes so I, yeah, anyone if you're going to yeah. It's normally not uh, based on a true story. Would recommend the audio book again for the fact that he reads it. 
It's a good, like it's memoirs. It's a good book. It's some jarring stuff in there. Oh, I'm sure. It's um, uh, trying to find like a, a good read or something. Damn. Uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a jarring one chapter in particular. If you've read it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't read it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, would recommend that. I think it's what yeah, audiobooks, thirteen bucks or like one credit. If you have that, would recommend. But it does go into like some of his family life, some of why he is the way he is, like for better or worse. Mm-hmm. It goes into a lot of his gambling. Like he's pretty open about his gambling addiction. Like he's like the pretty. <laughs> That's another joke from you. He's like, listen, if you if you got your choice of diseases, alcoholism, <laughs> like you you got the best one. Uh, <laughs> so you you have to drink on it. Yeah. You, you have to. Yeah. What's your side effects? I get happy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that killed but, me. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm gonna have to run back through this book. Yeah, no, the fact that he reads it. Does he go off on any like asides or does he just read it? I feel like he def- like or even that he's like, now hold now hold on now. Like just stuff like that. That's <laughs> that's like I'm certain this is not in the uh in the script. <laughs> I want, yeah, yeah, I want like to- seven years to record. <laughs> I want yeah, like here it is. Book rating four and a half. People are giving the narrator rating five stars. Mm-hmm. Joshua says it's all right, I guess. He gave it five stars. Uh, anonymous. It's funny. Four stars. It's a tough crowd, man. It's a tough crowd, but yeah, he's. It tells a lot about his gambling, about how he basically. He, he's a he's openly addicted to gambling, but he's famous enough to go to any casino and they'll give him a room and chips and all that. So he's like, I mean, it's worse things I could be addicted to. Right. He's not wrong. Yeah, I feel like the the heroin dealers aren't as liberal with their with their product. <laughs> Not anymore. Shit. <laughs> uh, no, uh, 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 weekend update joke. Uh, high school pot uh, marijuana use was like at an all time high. He just holds up a handful of cash. Like, don't I know it? <laughs> <laughs> he was he was on Conan, and he was just like. <laughs> He, was, he kept saying how he's a deeply, deeply closeted <laughs> gay man. And Conan was like, Where, are you saying you're gay? He's like, no. Can you listen? Can, can you hear? I'm I'm you know what deep closeted means? <laughs> I'm happily married to my wife. He's like, the people who are deeply in the closet don't admit to being gay. And Conan's like, what are you trying to say? He's like, well, I'm saying I'm deeply closeted. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gay. What? No. No, 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 no. Do you know what deeply closeted means? Yeah, take uh, take the potatoes out of your ears, O'Brien. <laughs> Which I mean that whole might as well pull that up. Shit. I was about to I was like, I could say a joke, or I could just watch him do it. The power of technology. Uh, pretty good. It's one, it's not the moth joke one. But it is him on con. He was on there like a hundred and fifty times. Here it is. Um, I mean, he's on there. The uh... he is a fat, <laughs> ugly. Old... Wait, can't spoil it. So, I'm. You know, I, I was angry when it was in the fiction, nonfiction. Yeah. Because it's a memoir. It's a memoir. It doesn't mean anything. Right. It's like if you, you know. About grapes of wrath. You're like, hey, there's no grapes. Yeah. <laughs> or you put in the grape section. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. Then everybody will find grapes of wrath. Yeah. People that like grapes. Okay, listen. <laughs> Norm, settle yeah. down. This Have is... I made my point? You made your point. Uh, I, if I... this was a memoir, if this were a memoir, yeah. I would put juicy things from my own life. Right, right. Like, what kind of things would you put in there that nobody knows? Well, I guess the biggest thing that nobody knows about me is I'm a deeply closeted gay man. What? <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's, you're a gay man? I'm not gay. I said I'm deeply closeted. 
<laughs> I'm Wait. straight as an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a gay man who won't admit it. No. Do you know what deeply closeted means? Yeah. It means a man who will not acknowledge that he's gay. Yes. So I'm telling you, I'm not gay. <laughs> I got a wife. I just, you got a wife. I just got married because I thought, uh, go through that charade, uh, keep appearances up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the so, kind of thing you tell if yeah. this were a memoir. Yeah, if, if this, this were a memoir, right. if this were a memoir, I would tell about my wife. What a battle axe. <laughs> a I'm battle not, axe? I mean, I, no one's called their wife a battle axe since 1945. Come. How do you feel about a woman? She's supposed to be my life partner. I look in the mirror the other day and I says to her, I says, honey, I look in the mirror and all I see is a fat, ugly old man. And I need you to give me a compliment. She says, all right, then. Uh, your eyesight is damn near perfect. I said, you dirty dog. <laughs> uh, watching that and the Bob Saget, he, I think he curses one time in the Saget yeah. Rose. But like, if he doesn't, I, if he chose to just go completely clean, he'd be just as funny. Absolutely. Like, he, like and that the stand up, he, he works blue, but in this he works clean. And in the saga thing, I, I think it's literally one. I think he says fucking one time. He and, says fuck when he says you're a fucking dog face after the German yeah. shepherd line. He, he's yeah, like, and then uh, he goes, "How could you not get that?" And he looks at the crowd with disgust. <laughs> he's sick of it, um, <laughs> except for that one. The one guy that's just sprawled like uh, like Shaq at at that roast with uh, <laughs> where Jamie Fox was cooking the dude. Oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy listen uh yeah that's a filleting it's that's when i know i was like jimmy fox really not a good guy <laughs> i don't think nobody is like nobody is like a good guy that like this is not okay. good guy but hey, uh, for people that don't know this was a roast for emmett's uh, yeah emmett smith and jamie fox is hosting dick gregory's talking now uh, Dick Gregory didn't have any jokes for Emmett Smith. Um, no, n shockingly, no. Shaq has a nine-piece suit, and a comedian named Doug Williams, who I had like seen on a couple things before this, and he was very funny in those things. Not so great in this one, uh, and Jamie Foxx lets him hear about it. Yeah. I can't believe something. Hold on, hold on. I gotta get I, I need the whole shebang. Nobody knows that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna keep this thing rolling. Another person that does not know anything about Emmett Smith and you don't know who the fuck he is, give it up for Doug Williams. <laughs> Thank you. He is right. Nobody knows me. I'm the only broke motherfucker on this panel. <laughs> Everybody else came here to roast Emmett Smith. I came to this motherfucker for a deal. That's what I'm looking for. I'd like to thank Shaq. Well, well, actually, Shaq didn't invite me. I snuck in this. Actually, fuck Shaq. Uh, Just blended in with everybody. <laughs> I'll punch him in his Shaq. belly. Stay out of Yeah, I hate him. Shaq, you got to give it up for him. Give it up for him. If you believe as big as he is, this motherfucker can play all year about his coat. And I, it's about the heat I up. I can't believe somebody seven one was complaining about a toe. All that money this nigga's making, and he complaining about a toe. You could cut my foot off, and I'd still run up and down the damn court for the kind of money they pay Shaq. And I know how you hurt your toe, Shaq. <laughs> big ass Shaq. Is driving a little bitty Ferrari. Can you believe this big thing can fit into a little bitty Ferrari? Actually, no. I don't. Know, I don't. I've seen him get into the Buick. I believe it. <laughs> Jimmy Fox is not a good person. It's fine, but this is just not the conduct of I mean, a good he's, person. He's too talented to also be a good human too. Like he, it was either be a good person or also sing. And he was like, "I'll take sing." <laughs> yeah, no, give me that. Because it's like what? It's like you want to go jokes. He's funnier than you. 
You want to sing off? He can sing better than you. He play instruments. And uh, Doug Williams can't do any of that shit. No. <laughs> and Jamie, we happy for you. You done been in what, two hit movies? Y'all get up. You been in two hit movies, we happy. Because you got off to a slow start, nigga. Nobody here saw Held Up or Bait. Did anybody here see Held Up or Bait? Nigga, thank God you got an LE, nigga. Thank God you got an LE. <laughs> Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, what's up, Monique? It was talking about big women. I love big women. I love big women. I love you because you are proud of the fact that you're big. I'm tired of all these silly bitches who won't admit that big women look good. That's what I'm talking about. I hate big women that try to hide the fact that they're big. They always say, uh, I'm just big boned. Nah, oh, bitch, you got regular bones with big ass meat wrapped around. That's why I love you, baby. Big bones. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all <don't bother. laughs> bad person. <laughs> and Mike, where the hoes at, man? Where the hoes at? I can't even get some of some of these hoes, man. You got no hoes? No cocaine? Nigga, no wonder this party is so dead. We want you to lie her shit up. Is he right now? <laughs> We're here for Emmett Smith. Do you have any chance hey. for him tonight? Uh, <laughs> got toy, got everybody out of the way. I did too. I want to say this to Emmett Smith, man. I'm your conscience. It's a pleasure. <laughs> man, it sure did get hot in here. <laughs> Am I fucking up right now? <laughs> I'm your conscience. I really don't need to be up here right now. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, start making stitch. money, you can't tell them shit. I'm your cop. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was in a movie with Jamie. Maybe you right about 48 that. hours. You are right about that. 72 hours. In fact, I don't know. In fact, I need a co-signer. Can you co-sign on the car for me? I just did another joke that didn't go over. <laughs> I'm your conscience. Bad guy. Maybe I should say something nice about Emmett and wrap it up. <laughs> or maybe I should talk about how black people have to struggle. Yeah, that'll get them on my side. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jamie Fox. Thank you. I, I needed the help. I appreciate it. I'm you. not Jamie Fox. <laughs> I'm your <laughs> conscience. <laughs> anyway, this this doesn't make me. Who is? This, this doesn't make me feel bad for Doug Williams at all. It makes me feel bad for every teacher Jamie Foxx ever had, because you know he was mm. just a ruckus in class. Well, every substitute teacher. Oh, boy. Every substitute, every, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bernie, uh, like, our, our <laughs> like everybody had, like, that sub. Our sub was Mr. Bernie. Well, he was, like, this guy with the big belly and, like, one eye. Nicest guy in the world. <laughs> Nicest guy in the world. Um, I mean, he had two eyes, but they was going. They was out of here. Mm -hmm. And he would just sit on the curb. It was the fun. He would sit on the curb after school and wait for his wife to pick him up from work. And it was just, I'm I mean, like, it was just some wholesome shit. You just walked. It. Wait, now your wife, Mister Bernie? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, wait on my wife. Uh, and so I'm just thinking, Jamie Fox would have tore Mister Bernie a leg. <laughs> Tore him limb from limb. I'll say all that to say. <laughs> Jamie Foxx would have tore Mr. Bernie limb from yeah. limb. He was uh, a nice guy trying to educate the youth, and Jamie Foxx would have been in his in his kitchen. Oh, man. He would have been hot uh, <laughs> all year long. Um, I mean, if, if Doug hmm. Williams can swing on Jamie Foxx, he's, he, he has none of my respect. I think that's really his only option, and I... I don't know if he could take him there either. Like, I don't know if he wants. <laughs> I don't know if he Every time I see Jamie Foxx, he's in pretty good shape. Like, I don't know if he wants that smoke either. He's been training for that fucking Tyson movie for like 15 years. Oh, yeah. Like, he, this is a guy who was like going blind, like 
put lenses in to go blind for 16 hours a day for Ray. So I imagine he's uh, taking some real boxing classes. Uh, yeah, he is just Mike Tyson now. Like at, at this point, yeah. he's been this movie has been uh, shelved and and this, re-updated. Like every, I feel I like every don't two believe years it. we hear about it. I still don't believe it. this. And uh, Mike Epps been playing Richard Pryor for fourteen years. Yeah, I've been waiting on yep. this Richard Pryor uh, movie with Mike Epps, who I would kill it. And I I feel like I've seen the pictures. Like, oh, he's in he's in costume or whatever. I don't know when these movies are going to come out. Uh, Mike Epps just also might dress like that sometimes. Like you, you can't put that past him. That's a good. Like he, he just got to throw out. He's just doing wild cocaine. Uh, <laughs> like, Mike, Mike, you're you're in your prior bag. Did the what now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> put down those cocks, Mike. We uh, you're what? in character, right? Now. <laughs> Offset, man. Offset. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I don't. I mean, I want to talk other stuff, but I yeah, I don't. I feel like I've said all I say about not one of the greats, like legit, no hyperbole. One of the greats. I feel like he's like the non corny version of like a comedian's comedian, right? Like like every comedian. I feel like it was he and like probably Patrice, like the guys who like other comedians were like they made us laugh the hardest. I feel like I've only heard like five, six guys get that designation. Like you hear it sometimes, but like repeatedly heard it was like right. him, Louis CK, which <laughs> not, not anymore, but there was a point where he was not in a terrible masturbation accident. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Regan. I hear it about a lot. Um, hmm. Uh, Charlie Murphy was that way until Chappelle show. And then he very much had his own lane. Um, <laughs> right. I'm trying to think. I know there was one more I was just thinking of, but like, Oh, Colin Quinn. Uh, Colin Quinn's one of those guys too. Who? I was going to say, I feel like every Sam Kennison. Well, like Sam Kennison, like he was just like, I, I feel like there's, <laughs> there's been two comedians who's been basically <laughs> rock. Stars more so than comedians, it's Sam Kennison and Cook. Those are the two. Yeah, Belushi. I was older Belushi. Yeah, no, I know. No, other Belushi's got the gas. He's he's. Listen, uh, we'll, listen we'll talk Jim Belushi. I can't <laughs> believe that. <laughs> uh, other say, him yeah. and him and Farley. Like, I feel like there's such mm. a difference between like comedy actors and comedians that I don't always lump them together. And that's just a me thing. I'm probably wrong in doing so. No, I guess I the third yeah. rock the third rock star comedian would have to be Kevin Hart just because of the numbers he does. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's one it's a technicality, but yeah, you have to put him there. Yeah, listen, I, none of those three guys are like it, it like and <laughs> Kennison was of a different era. So if I'd right. grown up with him, would I look at him differently? Probably. But looking back, it's like hard to believe he was as big as he was. And I'm not trying to throw dirt on the man's name, obviously. Like right. he had the I, moment. Yeah. But like I I that's that's dice clay with me. I was like, he was saying this stuff. They were like, Man, that guy's cutting edge. He, is, <laughs> he pops the collar on that jacket, man. He can say anything you want. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm glad we did like 80s comedy had some obvious highs with like Eddie Murphy and stuff like that, but man mm. oh man were, were there's were there some lows. <laughs> I feel like the lows were everybody that weren't what Seinfeld and Eddie Murphy, like that and Belushi, yeah. maybe. If you the made it into the 90s, like I was gonna I say, what you're saying. Pryor, Pryor had Pryor and Carlin had some stuff in the 80s. No, I know Carlin did. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Richard Pryor did. So yeah, they both yeah. did. Uh, well, shit, Carlin had stuff in uh, till the day he died. The, the, <laughs> he did. Yeah, they, he, was, he dropped the tape the day he died. Um, that's that's what listening to, which is weird, but the 2011 Norm album we've been talking about, yeah. it reminded me of later Carlin stuff. But I don't think I would have thought that way if I listened to that album Monday, for example. Like if I listened to it right. the 13th, I would have been like, oh, this is just dark humor. And then he gets right, into typical set. Norm. Uh, but yeah. listening to it post mortem, it was just like, oh, he like we were saying, like it very much sounded like he was accepting that cancer was going to take him out. 
yeah. He's like, <laughs> guy can't just die anymore. He's got he's got to conquer a battle, <laughs> some battle. Uh, <laughs> right, and then he, he dies a loser. Like, why why are we doing <laughs> this to people? Uh, but yeah, RIP to to a real one. Uh, one of the funniest to ever walk this planet. A legit one of one, like none before him, none become. There are no, no young comedian is like, oh, he reminds me of Norm McDonald. Um, like I, Nathan Felder, like the like awkward Canadian, com- like I feel like he, he kind of leaned in, like took the, I'm comfortable with the awkwardness to 10, but I wouldn't call him, I don't, I wouldn't call him a Norm. He didn't remind me of Norm McDonald. No, part of part of Norm also felt like he was just like, like the funny uncle. You know what I mm. mean? Like he, he all like his. He always seemed older than he was. Like even like he he passed. I think at sixty one. Like he felt yeah, like he was older. Like he felt like a young mm. sixty one. Like I don't, I don't know. Maybe yeah. because like when even when you said he started SNL in ninety four, like I, that blew my mind. I always associated him with like. Belushi obviously not because I thought I ever saw them on screen together but like when people say golden age SNL like I always lump Norm in with mm. that 80s cast and it's wild he was more with like and it makes sense he was in Billy Madison like he was always around like the Colin Quinns those kind of people but I don't know he felt like he felt like a throwback and in, in, in all the right ways mm. yeah I like he Billy Madison uh, dirty work mm-hmm I feel like he I feel like more movie like it wasn't movie star, but was in no, a few I movies. He, was, I feel like yeah, he could have been bigger. I think he just didn't care. I I feel like I feel like that OJ shit really hurt. <laughs> like whoever it was, yeah, uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. Um has, has Orenthal tweeted about it? Oh god. I hope not. Um Hello, Twitter world. Oh boy! Yeah, he he just posted the uh, R.I.P. Bozo meme. Like, take that! <laughs> he said I had to show up to a hater's funeral. Uh, make sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Bozo is such an elite. Uh, it is. I don't know what. Maybe it was just me sleeping on it for so long. But R.I.P. Bozo is perfect. It's just perfect. Uh, R.I.P. R. Bozo with the prayers down uh, picture is, is <laughs> delete posting. Let me see. Here we go. Billy Madison, the people versus Larry Flint. Dirty work. He did, yeah, a lot of voiceover work. Dr. Doolittle, Deuce Bigelow, Screwed. Yes, Dr. Doolittle 2. Course. Deuce Bigelow 2. Yes, Dr. Doolittle 3 and 6 and 9 and all that. Uh, funny people. And yeah, he. I mean, it's like if you around this time, he just didn't really do movies anymore. No, no. I mean, it's it even in that '90s stretch, like felt like yeah, bigger. Yeah, I I mean, I think I don't know which NBC guy it was, but I feel like it was like respect for. I love uh, like Dirty Work and Screwed. All those a guy who was like. Hosting Essence like Weekend Update and killing it. Seth Meyers wouldn't be in like you know what I'm saying. Right. Like Seth Meyers went to like head writer shit to like uh, it feels like I don't know that feels like something he would have did before then. Right. And I say that not as a step because again I don't know how it holds up. I'm afraid to watch it to, to see. But I remember loving it when I was like ten. Funniest shit I right. ever seen. Right. Yeah. I, that's not something I've gone back and revisited a bunch. Mm. It felt like very much of the time. Yeah, he was on Star Search, uh, which I can I can't imagine he got more than like one star. Uh, <laughs> a twenty, a thirty year old, twenty nine year old <laughs> Norm McDonald wrote on Dennis Miller, wrote on Roseanne, Saturday Night Live from oh wait ninety three ninety three to ninety nine, um, Larry Sanders show. Drew Carey, Norm Show, didn't like Fairly Odd Parents. The <laughs> he gets a tagline for the <laughs> Comedy Central roast. Uh, oh, I forgot Mike Tyson's mysteries. I oh yeah, that. that's right. 
That yeah, might, that's like one of the longest shows he's been. That might be the number two show he's been on. I was like forty nine. Like, yeah, Saturday Night Live was ninety eight episodes. Our Norm, Norm show was fifty four. Okay. And yeah, Mike Tyson Mysteries was forty nine. And I guess he was going to be a consulting producer on New Roseanne. They got Ivermectin Roseanne before she got her ass uh, fake canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what girl boss is, but if Quick Norm is in it, arc. yeah, Rick. Plum shanks. But- I might need to find out what that means. Yeah, uh, Skylanders Academy. That okay. Apparently, he's got everything on everything he's ever done is apparently on Netflix. He hosted the Canadian Screen Awards. He was the judge on Last Comic Boy. You talk about a tough crowd. Yeah, twenty fifteen Last Comic Standing too. Not even like when did that start? Oh six or something like that. Maybe oh four. Oh three. Shit. 03 to 2010, then again in 2014 and 15. They brought it back for like one year, and it was like, nah, this shit sucked. We should have kept it dead. I felt like it had so much potential when it started. Did anybody like really be? I remember Ralphie May, uh, Mm -hmm. RIP, Rich Voss. Okay, I don't, Mm -hmm. he didn't like start there, I don't think, but did anybody like really big come out of there? Uh, Gary Gallman's decently big. That was season two, right? Uh, yeah, season two. Yeah, yeah, season two. Uh, Gary Gallman, Alonzo Bowden, mm-hmm. um, Todd Ant. Glass. Okay, yeah, I've seen Ant, but I feel like I've saw. I don't know, maybe it wasn't this was a long time. Maybe that was where Ant kind of got started. Well, there were because uh, like Gabriel Iglesias got on this. It was either season three or four, and he was already like starting. And now Gabriel Iglesias is fucking huge. Yeah, Corey Holcomb. Good lord, <laughs> Kathleen Madigan. Uh, let's see, season three, Lonzo Bowden, Rich Voss, Goldman, all stars. Yeah, Ralphie. Maybe they bring back everybody. Uh, must have. Yeah, like this. I, okay, there is a Glacius, but I, I I don't know any of these other names. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they got those weird. numbers. I think some people, yeah, Gabriel Iglesias got disqualified because he used his cell phone. Uh, and that was illegal. So they kicked him off the show. Uh, I feel like he's doing all right. Doug Benson. Was, oh, wow. A young Doug Benson. Marijuana uh, rights advocate Doug Benson. That's Amy Schumer and Lavelle Crawford. Those are big names. Yeah, this is Ralph. I feel like I know Ralph Harris. If it's one I'm thinking, Dante is a big name. Like, yeah, what the, what was this? Uh, winner got 250000 along with an NBC contract and a Bravo special. So a Bravo special? I've never seen a stand-up <laughs> Bravo special. <laughs> That's exactly, you want to be the first, don't you? Uh, <laughs> get your ass in the finals. Um, yeah, like, the, I, don't, I don't think I know a single name on here. Season I know- six. I know Eliza Schlesinger. She's pretty big still. Marcus, Marcus Jeff, uh, Jim Tavari. This guy's holding a, some sort of base, man. Get these, get these new comedians out of here, bro. What is this? is bull. Even Harry Potter. Like, get out of here. Yeah, what the fuck, man? None of these guys look funny. And I don't either, but I'm not on the Wikipedia for uh, last conversation. Yeah, I didn't try. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. God's pot. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's I, Roy, I know Roy Wood Jr. Uh, yeah, Mike DeStefano. I know Mick. Mick Kaplan has the funniest Hitler joke I've ever seen. <laughs> oh boy! Comfort. He did it on Conan, uh, and you only get like five minutes when you're on late night, and that was like the only joke he told. And it With had me Mick in here. Yeah, M M Y K. That shit killed me. It's been some people, couple have, times. some people have done it since uh in different uh, ways, but he was the first I've ever heard say it. I know it's his. Which you remember which one? The Hitler joke? Yeah. Yeah. 
He's done multiple Hitler jokes. No, I'm asking you. Like, you know which one of these? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't see it on my screen. I still see the fucking. Um, oh shit. The Wikipedia page. Let's see. Aha. Having kids is like doing drugs. I don't. Yeah, like I don't. His face doesn't look familiar. I'm not familiar with him. No, this is the only time I saw him. Go back up to the top. It's one of those first three for sure. I think it's the 2013 one. 13. The third it's got the most one. views. In conclusion, a joke about time travel, but first, the rest of everything I'm going to say. Uh, no, this is it. Buddhism, big fan, big fan of Buddhism, ordered a book on it. It hasn't arrived yet, so I presume it's been within me all this time. Uh, first chapter is probably like, get rid of all your possessions. I'm like, way ahead of you. Don't even have the book. So bring it, Buddhists, a thing they rarely hear. I like Buddhists because uh, I've never heard of them murdering everybody throughout history. Like, there's no historical, like, Buddhist Inquisition or Buddhist Crusades. There's, I don't, I've never heard of a Buddhist extremist. Like, what would that be? Just a guy taking a longer nap? I imagine. <laughs> Look out, suspicious. I, I'm not a Buddhist, I think. I don't know, could be. But uh, I was raised Jewish. Uh, not that Jewish, I'm this Jewish. Like I would run from Hitler, but that's about it. Uh, <laughs> especially today, I would definitely run from Hitler today because he would be a zombie today. <laughs> you should all run from zombie Hitler, Jew or not Jew. Uh, you should run from zombie Gandhi, for that matter. Run. More from Zombie Gandhi, I would say, because he fasted during life. He's probably hungrier in death. So <laughs> look out the most for Zombie Gandhi. Also the name of my favorite new hipster band that does not yet exist. That's how cool I am. So uh, the thing about time travel is uh, if it exists in the future, we all know, obviously, Jews are going to use it to go back and try to kill Hitler before all the shenanigans began. Obviously. Perhaps a harsher word than shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> hasn't happened yet. Hitler's still in our past. I believe, if you'd know otherwise, great. But Hitler is still there because it's not like Back to the Future. That's not how time travel works. It's, uh, you can't just go back and screw everything up. Great movie, Back to the Future, great movie. Wrong about time travel. Oh, yeah, thanks for one of those. You agree with something I said. Thank you. <laughs> Back to the Future, the, at the end of Back to the Future 1, which they didn't call that, they called it The Great Back to the Future. Uh, at the end of that movie, spoiler alert, it came out in 1985. You had a little while to see it. So. Doc Brown flies up in the time machine car and he's like, Marty, get in quick. We got to get to the future. Your kids, they're in trouble. Hurry. Even as a kid, I remember thinking like, why do you have to hurry? You have a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you invented it. You, you're like, we're going to be late. We'll just set it for earlier then. That's <laughs> literally how it works. You're a doctor, I hear. Uh, they made three of those movies. They made one Groundhog Day, sort of a travesty. I feel like I love Groundhog Day. I have a friend, George, in New York who saw, he thought he saw Bill Murray on the streets of New York. He was like, Bill Murray! He yelled it at him. And so that guy who yelled at looked back and was like, nope. <laughs> and my friend George went home all sad. He's like, I thought it was Bill Murray. Next day, turns on the TV, sees a talk show. Bill Murray's the guest. It was that guy. It was exactly that guy. He's like, man, so Bill Murray is such a great actor. <laughs> he was able to convince my friend George that he was not Bill Murray. Like, <laughs> unbelievable, Bill Murray. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for clapping for how great an actor I said Bill Murray was. <laughs> what a great story. What a story about Bill Murray, I just told you. And about my friend George. Why did I make it about George? Could have been about me. I could have said I saw him but I'm not a liar, number one. <laughs> number two, I don't want you guys thinking I'm the kind of guy who yells Bill Murray at Bill Murray. <laughs> I don't do that, I wouldn't do that. If I saw Bill Murray on the street, I would yell like, Phil, Phil Connors, and then I'd run around the block and yell it again, run around the block and yell it again, and again, and again, and again. Have somebody film it, call it Groundhog Day 2. So, get another one of those up on the board. So, that's not how time travel works. Here's how I think it does work. I believe you can go back in time, you just can't change anything. Physically, you cannot. Like you go back and try to shoot Hitler, your gun will jam. Because you didn't shoot Hitler. The first time around, you were just there with your gun jamming the whole time. Maybe it's like Terminator, where you can go back, but you can't bring weapons or clothing through, so a bunch of Jews are just turning up naked in 1940s Germany. 
neither the time nor the place. So <laughs> even if all that is the case, even if Jews know that they are doomed to never be able to kill Hitler, everyone in the future, they're going to be resilient and resourceful. Every Jew with access to a time machine is going to go back and try to complete this mission. Hundreds, thousands, millions of Jews, which means that if that's the case, then growing up, from Hitler's perspective, Jews are just trying to murder him all the time. <laughs> That's all that child Hitler knows, is that Jews are dicks from the future. <laughs> they are constantly coming out of the woodwork, throwing bombs and knives, shooting lasers, taking off his mustache. Probably that's why that happened, because he's barely able to get out of the way. He's able to matrix out like a neo-Nazi, if you will. And, uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much. No, that was good. The yeah. concept of, of future Jews being the reason Hitler hated them <laughs> just kills me. No, it looks like uh, like Nick Kroll, but yeah. also Aziz Ansari. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like some of his delivery. Um, but yeah, like I like that was good. But I've I've no, I'm just not familiar with the name. No, that um, if it weren't for Conan, and if I weren't watching yeah. it on June third, twenty thirteen, I never would have heard of him either. Like that's. That's how slim these margins are sometimes. I, th I think the whack shit about <laughs> comedy, because every single comedian's curse, you look up half of old comedians, they're dead. They're just dead. Like we look up Mick Kaplan, like died at 32. It's like, God damn. Uh, yeah, jumped off a building. Shit. He's funny, though. Uh, right. I, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Greg, when I saw Greg Gerardo at the sack, I was like, oh, man, Greg Gerardo. Um, who was not going with the shits at first, uh, with Norm shit at first. I think he was first. more like he couldn't believe he was doing it. Like, because mm. Geraldo would, would rip out everyone's heart. <laughs> Even because, like, Norm, everyone references, like, how Norm did. And I think it's like seven minutes how long he was up mm. there. He's funny the whole show because he's just reading a newspaper. Yeah, the whole like he's not paying attention. Everyone who like jabs at him, he's like, huh, me. And it's like he's I'm reading he's, Marmaduke. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. the new yeah. The hardest he roasts anyone is is Jeff Ross. Um, because Jeff <laughs> Ross tries to he's the one who he says the Marmaduke thing to, and he says something after, like basically, like this is funnier than anything you're saying, is what Norm was <laughs> getting at. And Jeff Ross was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, he's right. He's right. <laughs> Can't say he was a norm, not a capper. Uh, yeah, so yeah, someone someone said something, and he's like, "Well, I think we can all agree picking blueberries with with Bob Hope would be a delightful <laughs> afternoon." <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, shit. I can, Jim Norton, I think. Yes. Yeah, Jim Norton. Uh, <laughs> Jim has a tail and a yellow streak down his back. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> but, man. Uh, yeah, RP2. One of the legends. Uh, I can hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? I could when you were playing that. Not currently. I can toss some, some cans on if you'd like. Maybe. I can no longer hear it. I think that's better. Okay. All right. You got a minute to talk some hoop, Mick? Basketball. Well, no, no, no. I, I, didn't, I didn't say I said hoop. Like round? You like square? Orange? Stick you like and, backboard? Stick and hoop uh, uh, through, yeah. through the alleyways of 1820 <laughs> Great Britain? Yes. <laughs> okay. Go, go ahead and get it off here. Tell me why the Celtics are uh, going 82 and 0. Let's get. Get on with it. Well, House, it all started. <laughs> um, no, but I do think they're a top four seed in the East. I'm listening. Philly's Philly's not getting back in that top four. Like they they don't know what they want to do. The second they hired Doc Rivers was the second I stopped worrying listen. about them. That's fair. I was gonna say, listen, I think they know what they want to do. It's just nobody wants Ben Simmons. <laughs> that's that, that's what they want to do. Like I feel like most teams like probably do want Ben Simmons, but they know Philly has zero leverage. So they're like, Yeah, why would I give you anything worth what like yeah, you can get I know, like I heard the Celtics were like, listen, if we can if we can get right. them more Schroeder. Simmons. Yeah, we're Schroeder in the second round pick, huh? <laughs> um yeah, I, I mean they I can't imagine it's gonna I'd be shocked if Philly was competent this year. Um 
like miss the playoffs no, you no, think, no, no. or just I still think they're they're gonna make the playoffs but like okay. they're just I don't see play. yeah like yeah, play yeah, some... play they don't make the play in but not they don't have home court either, like five or six yeah that sounds right okay that's one out um, of the way okay I see like what I saw last year was a lot of the teams that went deep in the bubble fell back the heat the mm-hmm. Celtics the Lakers, Lakers. Nuggets, uh, like the Suns. The Suns had their they went undefeated in the bubble, but didn't even fucking make it to the playoffs in the bubble. So like, right. and then they added. It was almost like like the Knicks didn't even make it to the bubble. They were healthy last year. Julius Randle played out of his mind. Um, like I see, like and, and it was Tibbs. It was Tibbs' first year, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So it's like we know how that story goes like the longer you are with Tibbs the worse it's going to go the Bulls were really good when he first got there too and then he burns out all of his players well the thing he does I do wonder if he can get at least two years yeah that's fair he he, he might not here we go this is one I was looking for uh, but I, I guess it's more yeah. like the Knicks got Fournier cool I, and I, Kimba I, I don't know. and Kemp right yeah they got <laughs> they they stole our two top players. You see, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You talking home court? Talking about some damn yeah, home court? I, I don't know. Like I I really see us as the third best team in the East. I like I think the Hawks are still going to be good. I I don't know if they were a fluke. I don't know if they're like like I think Trey's really good. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like Hunter was banged up last year, but every time he plays, he's really good. Like I just, I just like the Hawks and the comp. I still can't believe mm-hmm. they pretty much got they got Clint Capella for a song. And say what you want about him in the Western playoff in the East, mm-hmm. Clint Capella can can stay on the fucking court. He's a problem. Listen, he was doing all right in the West. They all they traded Clint Capella for, I think one first round pick. Russell Westbrook tra- uh, played twenty three more games as a Houston Rocket after that. That trade was to fit for uh, for Westbrook. Westbrook played twenty three more games, and now Clint Capella is just throwing up fifteen and fifteen and two blocks right. a game for right. the Hawks. Just like, and I admit I didn't see the vision, but I mean at that price, how could you? Of course you take Clint Capella. They got him for cheap. He's locked up. Like I'm looking at the finals odds here. So who do you have above Nets, Bucks? I'm get those are the two you have above you for sure. Yeah. And then th- you think y'all are third? Yeah, or they only you? have three teams ahead of us here, unless I completely forgot the conference. That's what I'm like. That's a uh, Nets, Bucks two, Sixers is three, Heat is four, Hawks five, yeah, Celtics six, Bulls and Knicks are the seven and eight odds wise. Yeah, so we're I, I'm gonna say this with my chest out. We're better than the Heat. We're better than El Heat. Mm. We just are. Uh, mm. That bubble shit infuriated me because we Here led we in every single game. Yeah, two zip. Uh, no, nah, we go we, Eastern Conference odds. I think that's what that's what we want. Cause, yeah, six best to win the yeah. East. Yeah, and and I I I like the Hawks. I don't. I can't say we're we're better or worse. Like they played better last year, obviously. Mm. Um, I don't think they're going to regress. I'm kind of surprised they have the Knicks this low. Um, the Heat were better than the Sixers were better than. Like, I zeroed out my mind. None. They gave even with, even with Lowry and who else they they gave PJ Tucker and uh, Duncan Robinson for like $70 million? You're not scared? 90. 90. Yeah. Five for Yeah, you're not scared? Should be. No. 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 And Lowry's good. Um, but yeah, that's not a team that like Jimmy Butler can't shoot. I know Miles Brown's gonna have me murdered for this take, but Jimmy yeah, Butler, he's on his way to your shoot. house right now. Um, he can't shoot. It's it's a problem. Like the, there's a reason the Heat like they fizzled out last year. They they were never gonna beat the Lakers. I don't hold that against them by any stretch. But mm-hmm. like prior to that, like I mean, he blew up the 76ers. He blew up the Timberwolves. He blew up the Bulls. Like <laughs> I, that's what he does. Like they. I, um, the Heat are paying him like forty-seven and a half million dollars when he's yeah. Just got just got some new money. money. Yeah, terrible idea. Just terrible. I don't. Uh, he's. But, I think he's the unquestioned leader of the chaos. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think he. I think he's good. I think I'm, like the the Heat here are plus twelve hundred. 
to win the East. Celtics are plus 2,000. I think the odds should be closer than that. I don't even know who should be favored, but I do think I would agree that y'all are closer than that. Yeah, I mean, I think when I look at us, when when we look at last year, we led the league in COVID. I can't see that mm. repeating. Like I, it, I don't know. I can't, what? Here's that why, boy like, Schroeder moving funny, so you never know. He's been Schroeder needs fake, to be fake vaccine yeah. cards to make up for that eighty million dollars he lost. Carson Schroeder uh, needs to see the research first. I I just can't imagine a locker room that has Jalen Brown as a leader in that locker room is going to be completely unvaccinated. I just can't, I can't, that doesn't make sense in my brain, man. I wish Kyrie was still there. After he was tweeting yesterday, I can't <laughs> listen. He went, he said mask only, only fools in the middle of a global pandemic would think that he was talking what he was even referencing. Like, of course we knew he wasn't talking about that per se, but of course, of course, Kyrie Irving would, that's the, that's the synonym to you. It's like there were man, some, man. you know, there were people there in the middle of between his two tweets that were like, "I knew I liked this guy." Time to order his jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one, Kyrie Irving fan. Uh, I just placed my order. What do I have? <laughs> oh, brother. Uh. <laughs> um, but like this, we're. Do you think we're better than the Sixers? Because that's not even me. Like trying to be a, a rival or anything. Like, I genuinely just think we're better. I, it's so hard because I, Ben Simmons, he's going to start the season there. I don't think he ends the season there, but I really don't. Like, it's, I don't think Bradley Bill's asking for a trade yet. No. Dame, maybe, but again, he's going to have to ask for it. I don't, if Dame does, I, I, this is just me. I don't see Dame as like a midseason. They, I feel like if he, right. if they give it one more try, He's like, listen, man, let's like work. Let's get me somewhere. Y'all can start fresh. I can't see Dame playing 17 games and being like enough. Um, I could be wrong, but this is the year he goes to L.A. Uh, I say all that to say that the Orlando year, Magic, you know, Damian Lillard. Yeah. <laughs> he demands the trade. Uh, right. I would have. No, I would have Philly over you. I would have. Uh, yeah, I think I think it comes down to. They have the best player. That's what I in a playoff series. Do is they? he gonna be there? <laughs> well, I mean, so do neither my business, New York. Oh, you don't you think Tatum's better than MB? I do. I wouldn't have last oh. year. I do now. Based off of what? What what changed? <laughs> like a guy what shooting changed? up in the draft, he didn't do anything. You said <laughs> you said you said if, since the end of last year? No, like last going into last season, I wouldn't have had this take, is what I'm saying. I got you. So like, after nah, the years they just had, you think Tatum is better? It's not even just the years. I mean, it's like the the point of Tatum's career where like I don't he's not a young he's not a nineteen year old anymore. You understand? He's true. This like true. he's he's like and uh, we got to change the definition of prime years too. I feel like we have had no. Uh, it's still twenty eight to thirty two in everyone's mind. Like that's not true. That's yeah. not correct. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> um. And Embiid, like, if we do want to talk about how his season ended, this man was airballing layups against the Hawks in the fourth quarter. Multiple oh, games in a row. <laughs> I remember. Multiple games. Uh, was it like 0 for 12 half? I seen it. Yeah, um, it was tough. Uh, he had all those, like, the 50-point games don't mean much to me, but, like, what my biggest gripe with Tatum in years past has been, like, better and and specifically bigger teams he has in like against the bucks even in mm. the first round like he just kind of was withering and mm. i do think he's gotten much stronger not just because of like the the gym picks uh i'll expose on it half like just over the years mm. add a little muscle add a little muscle add a little muscle and like his distribution's gotten a lot better i used to hate it he he doesn't lose the ball uh running to the rim as often <laughs> used to because his hands weren't strong enough that's those drew hanlon drew yeah he's uh I, like i genuinely think we're gonna see like top five mvp votes for tatum this year like i, I really think he's gonna have a special year is it gonna be bill simmons that does the vote <laughs> yes is, he's it, gonna, is that the vote he's gonna, all the rest of the voters are on the ringer staff so he's gonna I, he's gonna make sure he's gonna cut the books i now nah, after the season they both i I can't in good faith say that, even though I feel like at this point, I feel like I'm higher on Tatum than 
more people I see. Like the one I keep coming back to, I remember Bomani was talking to somebody and they were like, the Celtics still don't have that guy. And I was like, I mean, he's not that guy now, but they were saying it like Tatum doesn't have a chance to be the guy. I don't know if he's going to be the guy. I think he has a chance, though. Like, I, I from everything he's shown his, his first, what, four year, five? Was he four? The 17 draft. So, whatever. One that into. Is. It's not important. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just, okay, yeah, finish year four going into year five. It's like, I haven't seen anything from him to think, like, this is just where he's at. Like, I'm not going to get any better. I'm right. I'm set. That, uh, it, it's it's more me being confident he's going to take like a more firm step into being that guy this year. Uh, mm. Like, it, I I put more weight into what other players are saying than a lot of other people do. I know some people are like, oh, if a player thinks that, like, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm a journalist. You understand? I see sure. the game better. Big J. Yeah. Sure. But when when Durant's just like, oh no, that dude's next. Like that doesn't make it seem like it's five years from now. That makes it seem like Dur- Durant's happy, happy that James Harden, and, and they're gonna get it out of the way <laughs> sooner than later. Listen, Durant had me hyped for Kevin Knox, man. I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I think I we get a little talk. more tape on on Tatum than we do on Knox. Uh, well, you shouldn't have said he was the next Will Chamberlain uh, or whatever. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. Well, you just mentioned, oh, yeah, 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 kid, yeah, kid had a good game. It was both of them. That's why I was like, dude, we're about to, we might not lose a game. Uh, we lost some games. Um, <laughs> it turns out, uh, yeah, I mean, I, we're, we're looking at a lot of numbers here, and Tatum's got better numbers uh, all over the place offensive nah, rating, know. defensive rating, uh, playoff numbers. Wait, that no, that's not true. What do you mean? Per hundred oh, no. percent. I looked at the numbers backwards. I looked. Yeah, so, yeah. So I was, <laughs> yeah, Embiid's got better numbers across the board. <laughs> I, I mean, I think, I think he's a good defender. If he is going to make that leap, I think he's going to have to make that to great. And I think he can. But he, that's, I think that's where Embiid had. Embiid is a dominant defender for sure, uh, and it's, it's a different type of defense. Obviously, definitely. it's 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 wing and like help at the rim versus mm. just like straight up denying someone at the rim um but like where even if Embiid is going to be a better defender like i think offensively it's like a, a bloodbath or an impending would, bloodbath. the thing is if mb if if the threes are real now 38 percent last year um and again, if they just get Simmons at for literally anyone that can shoot, that's where I was like, I think MB has another level offense where it's just like, if he's like, I don't have to shoot threes at all. He only post up because he doesn't have a point guard and Matisse Thibel who like literally who just will not shoot. So I, I think if you, if I was going with Tatum, I think it'd be the health play. Like if you, I'd bet on Definitely Jason Tatum. Yeah, like I'd bet on Jason Tatum playing 100 you want 90 to 100 games you want to play next year more so than MB. I think MB is going to be better in them whatever games he plays, but cuz it was a, if you look at the his playoff numbers were good and he was good in the playoffs, but he was playing with a I think a torn meniscus, a, I think partially torn meniscus, but which one Johnson, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, Giannis's leg fell off, and then he won the finals. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if injuries gonna, even exist anymore. I was gonna say, listen, Trey's ankle touched the floor uh, on a play. He missed like a game and a half. So again, maybe MB just gets some of that. <laughs> if MB just plays seventy-seven games next year, and Silver's like, nah, some, uh, drug test that guy, man. I don't. <laughs> That's some bull. Uh, yeah, I'm not having it. No, I'm. I would bet on him for the longer play, but now did, Tatum was – did he make All-NBA this year? No, because he missed those fucking games with COVID uh, and he couldn't breathe, so he was bad for a month. Well, he, still, he still should have made third team. It was garbage he didn't. Well, you got to question his decision to get COVID. I think <laughs> it, I think it's fair. Uh, he's not – like you said, he's not a little kid anymore. Uh, I, he did, especially in the gold medal game, he looked like the second best player on Team USA. Hmm. Other players were like Booker had his moments, Levine had his moments, Durant was obviously the best player in the world. Mm. I had people tweeting me like during the game, 
like not after like during the games i'd be like man tatum's killing it right now and they're like he's got two points it's like he's the best defender on the court like that's that's where i do think he has taken a step there too because in the olympics he and of course it's the olympics it's not like he's always covering an nba player but right but you still i mean you still want to see the yeah the right right effort yeah he was he was like a bully defensively, especially in the like against Australia. Australia, Australia is no no small. Oh no, they played France no. in the championship. Australia in the do I have that backwards? Uh, France was championship, yeah. Right, France was championship, and Australia was, Australia the, was game, the yeah the third final. point in the previous game. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so both those games like he played much better offensively in the gold medal game. The the semifinal he was like okay. Um, but defensively, I thought he was a bully in both games, and he was like running like point forward at points too. Like I, I don't know. I just I think he's like you know me. I'm a Jalen guy through and through. But I do think Tatum's sure. going in, and uh, Jalen's taking steps too. Like if we're talking about the overall mm-hmm. team, Jalen last year was a monster until he broke his wrist. Again, decision making. Why are these guys getting hurt, getting uh, ill uh, right after they get hot? That I feel was, like Marcus Smart every I feel like every year he's playing well and it's like oh he's out for three weeks. <laughs> Punch the fire think. hydrant. Yeah. Didn't like the way I was looking at him. <laughs> Makes you think that long nose. Yeah. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I like our roster fit, whatever it was with Kemba. Kemba was putting up fine numbers, but it just like it seemed to be like in a different game happening with inside the overall game like he was just kind of putting up 20 on his own like it didn't seem to matter it wasn't an impactful like yeah, yeah. it was very strange to watch because like I, I look at his numbers especially after the season it was just like of guys who shot 35 percent from three for the last two years and um was taking at least eight it was like him and four other dudes like very elite company mm. steph steph didn't qualify because he missed that whole year um, mm-hmm. so it was, it was really only like four or five dudes. And it was just like, there's clearly something here. Like, I won't be surprised if he has a good year on the Knicks, but I also think like, we'll be able to expose that when we play just cause. Well, yeah. I mean, any, that's, that's the Kimber price you're willing to pay at this point. He's not, he's not gonna get better on defense. I think whatever the knee <laughs> issue it it appears to be like a chronic thing. Like it doesn't just seem like a torn meniscus that he got healed. Right. It seems to be like a chronic thing, but. For what they're paying him, it's fine. I feel like y'all's top two are heavy. I feel like it's a lot of the case I've heard Celtics fans make to me. I say it's a lot of mid on the roster after that, and they're like, "Yeah, but it was trash last year." <laughs> like, <laughs> so and I was like, "I think that's valid. It was some trash. There. there was nothing but trash here." They're um, not. It's not a wrong take. Um, like it's 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 Schroeder instead of Jeff Teague. NBA champion Jeff Teague. I was gonna say, listen, uh, Jeff Teague was playing fourth quarter minutes in the finals. <laughs> he was it was bad with the Celtics. It was for some uh, reason, yeah. <laughs> were, yeah. Well, let's not also discount the fact that we have a coach. Is he good? Well, I, I think he will be, but I think uh, he will be too. Yeah, I think uh, he will be, but remains to be seen. I think even if he's not perfect i do think just a new voice hearing different mm-hmm. things will be beneficial um yeah because there, there were mistakes we were making last year that were just not mistakes previous brad stevens teams was making mm-hmm. and it was strange to see like we used to kill on back-to-backs like i know you've heard me say that a million times and like mm-hmm. for the last year and a half if we had a back-to-back we were getting smoked in, in both of them like it, it was <laughs> it was tough it was like what's happening You're like it was just, said, no. well, listen, we was winning both of them and losing in the conference finals. Let's let's pivot. Uh, <laughs> we'll tank them both. Uh, I like everything. Like I, you know me, I don't claim to know anything about future coaches. When we hired Brad Stevens, I was upset mm-hmm. we didn't get Shaka Smart. Clearly, I was not correct in that uh, line of thinking. Man, y'all but, might have four rings by now if y'all had Shaka, but nevertheless, uh, uh, <laughs> everything I've read and heard about Ime Udoka makes it seem like he's made to be a head coach, whether or not it. In mm. Boston, the place where he coaches for 25 fucking years, like Jerry Sloan, remains to be seen. But I do think he'll do well. I also think, like, Robert Williams keeps taking steps mm. in the right direction, like, especially offensively. Like, I feel like he's very underrated offensively, both like he's a really good passer, crazy passer, he's a really like, good I mean, passer. 
it, like it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and even like he was knocking down like 12 to 18 footers last year, which I don't need him taking a lot of, but if he's going to knock mm-hmm. him down, like, be my guest. Uh, I do think Allie Horford's going to help. Uh, no, is he starting? I don't think so. Thank good. I was going to say, if he's starting, y'all are not serious, respectfully. Listen, he got benched last year because he was helping Oklahoma City win too many games. Listen, everybody got benched last year. <laughs> they haven't played a game since, like, May. I'm scared for <laughs> it's March. I mean, <laughs> I'm scared for him. I, I think Al off the bench is going to be very, like, it just makes the second, yeah, the second unit more com- like just more competent in general. And mm-hmm. I like I'm still extremely high on Aaron Neesmith. Like I don't think he's mid. I think he's going to be like if he can learn how to play off Jalen and basketball. And, yeah. Yes, if he can learn how to play <laughs> basketball, look out. No, I mean he he would have like a 14 point night, and then we'd play two days later and he just wouldn't get in. And it's like, what's happening yeah. on these like plane trips? Is he farting like in people's cushions? Like, he's just he the doing? worst guy ever. Yeah. Like, what could he possibly be doing? He just pushed Brad Stevens off the team plane, sits in his chair. <laughs> Joe I'm a coach now. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even do that. Uh. <laughs> so I, I, I think he's going to have just like a role. Like he's going to have a role and mm-hmm. actually, I, I'm a big consistent minutes guy. Like when even yeah. fucking when Shemi Ojale, who's with the Bucks now, but. He always played better with consistent minutes. We saw it with Terry. Terry led the team to the Eastern Conference Finals, and then the next year his minutes were wildly inconsistent. He gets to Charlotte. His minutes have been consistent ever since, and he's been fucking nasty for t- the two years he's been there. Like I'm, Malik's it, the, Malik Monk's the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just, like if you're giving him 20 minutes, it's going to have to be 20. It can't be 31 game and 10 the next. And 35 yeah. and 5, it's got to be 20. You got to live with the – if you're going to get the best out of him, it's just got to be a steady 20. And you look, yeah, I like what I've seen. Like, I liked him at Vanderbilt. He just got hurt his last season, right. but he fits like the pro, like, was he 6'6? Six, six? Like 6'5, six, 6'6. Six, 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 five, six, six, yeah. Yeah, like wing athletic enough, but can shoot. I think he could really shoot. I think that's going to be, that's where he's going to help. Josh Richardson, man, I just, this won't be the third straight year that I'm trying to sell myself on a Tennessee guy. I'm all in. I, I'm, I get it because I I thought he was gonna. I was like, oh no, Dallas, no nah, Dallas, that's a good fit. Oh Philly, oh no, nah, he'll fit in real well. Philly, but it should be a good fit. I just don't know anymore, Mick. I just don't know anymore. I I get it, but I've also I've been shockingly low on Josh Richardson until we acquired him, and then I boy did my tune <laughs> change somehow. Um, huh. I, I'm doing whatever else is done, like. Yeah, logistically, a guy who can knock down some shots. He's got a weird shot. Something I hadn't really noticed until we signed him. Like it's a, it's a weird release. It's a yeah. weird release. Um, can't imagine it's very repeatable. But <laughs> when it goes in, boy, um, <laughs> I do think just like the the type of team. I think we're almost reverting back to the team we were a few years ago, which is like focus on mm. defense first which we didn't do at all last year, at all. No. Why? <laughs> it's why Jalen got no. fucking hurt because it was against the Oklahoma City mm. Thunder and he had to go in for a dunk late in the game because it was a close fucking game and he landed <laughs> weird and fucking broke, like sprained his wrist. Like if we just yeah. blow out the team that's trying to lose. Like, <laughs> They're trying to give you the happen. game. Just take it, man. Yeah. If it doesn't yeah. happen. We probably don't play the Nets in the first round. I'm not saying anything big happens, obviously, but mm. that season goes differently if we could take care of bad teams. We weren't yeah. doing that. We were always playing to a level of competition last year, and that does kind of speak to the coaching. And I understand it was a weird year. We never had mm. a set lineup more than two games in a row, if that. <laughs> right. So I get it. I get it was weird, but I unless another catastrophic outbreak happens, which – Boy, Listen, man. Can. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> I, I I take the over. Uh, I'll put it that way. <laughs> My thing, with Rich, I think, Rich, I think he admitted that, like, la- he like had COVID. And I think he had like a pretty tough case of it. So I want, with respect to that, I want to. I feel like he can bounce back. If if we're because we've committed to starting smart at point guard, so which I'm sure mm. you have thoughts on. Uh, but maybe Mark Marcus, Josh Richardson, Jalen Tatum, 
and Rob as your five. Uh That should be a top three defense in the league. Like with respect to how good Embiid is and and Philly's going to be a good defense, even if Ben Simmons is out there playing uh, at gunpoint, they're still going to be a very good defense. But outside of them, like I don't know who else is going to be as athletic and be able to switch as much as as we'll be able to with a rim defender like we have the bucks yeah yeah the bucks are still good they've got Drew. Bad, bad they've got that guy. <laughs> i think he re- i think he's gonna play again i think he's coming back um no i can i can see the the vision like i think i feel like my hope would be like if you're trying to talk yourself into the celtics if the stars can stay healthy, there's enough options to put around them. Right. Like if Jay, if Tatum and Brown stay healthy, a lot less <laughs> matters, like just by virtue of good players being. So it's like, OK, if we can just pick from. Like a smart Williams probably be closing, but then one of Neesmith or Richardson or Langford or I don't even know who's. Not Grant Williams. Y'all got two Tennessee guys. Give me a break. And a Vandy. <laughs> I, I don't mind Vandy. I'm. 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 They're not. They're a not a rival. Yeah. At all. Listen, Tennessee's not a threat. I still don't like. Them. Yeah, no. uh, <laughs> dude, that's, they might be the oh Tobias Harris. Yeah. Yikes. Um. Yeah, I'm off the. Listen, I was. I was trying. I was drinking the Kool Aid too, man. This shit tastes terrible. I realized y'all still you had didn't Grant get Williams. Peyton Pritchard yet? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, Pritch is good. I think he's he good. He is. Um, I forgot about him. He's. I think he's like legit. I don't know if it's thirty-five minutes, but whatever minutes he gets, he's he's something. Yeah, um, he's. Uh, I don't know. He he. A. I think he's like a really lethal shooter, especially hmm. if he's just going to come off the bench and jack. Which is kind of like I, I wanted Schroeder when he was free, um, and I'm glad we got him because I do think our guard depth is. I keep been, forgetting Schroeder. Yeah. Right. Our guard depth's been despicable uh <laughs> lately. So getting him was huge and I'm and I'm glad for it. But it's like I also can see a log jam. Like that's where the inconsistent min- minutes come. So that's mm-hmm. where I'm hoping these guys like have set roles and know have a good understanding of what's coming on a nightly basis. And right. obviously that changes team by team. But yeah, I mean I'm I'm obviously very high on Jalen, very high on Tatum. I, I like our guard rotation, even though there's no like real standout Marcus offense or defense. Obviously, and Schroeder, Schroeder, on. did he win six man two years ago? Uh, no, uh, Montre, he came in second, but right, yeah, yeah, right in Oklahoma right. City, yeah, yeah, and because the, the Lakers, yeah, they got both the top two. That yep. was the story, yeah, that's right. Yep. But so we know he can thrive in that role, is, is more the point mm. I was getting at. Um, I don't know. I like the squad. Um, I wasn't upset. We sold our first round pick this year. I really didn't care about them. The sixteenth mm. pick or whatever the fuck it was. Like I, we we're setting up. Yeah. I still believe to get Beal next summer, and I think that's why Beal isn't requesting a trade. I really genuinely believe. Uh, that. Like it wouldn't surprise me. One like that's what we consistently see out of the Olympian. I know Beal wasn't there for too long, but he was there for the training and all. Like all the other, he's he's on the right. group chat. Uh, yeah, and him and Tatum have been boys forever. Yeah, so, so like, like, and I, I, I think it was, it was one. I think it was Bill that was like, yeah, like as long as we've been friends, we've never really got to play at the same time, just because right. or on the same team because the age difference. So that wouldn't surprise me. And I feel like wherever Dame goes, like it, he's gonna have a team. It's not gonna be I'm, I want out. Right. Wherever you think, wherever you think fits. Wherever you, Sacramento's cool. Um, <laughs> so it's like. It's same for, same for Bill. If when he asks out, it's he'll say three teams, but it'll be the Celtic or whoever he's really going to. So like that's why I think yeah. he's going to ride out this whole year in Washington because I do think they realize they can't make the trade without throwing Jalen in, and once you throw Jalen in, it's pointless because hmm. now you're it, like it's not pointless because it's still Beal and Tatum. It, yeah, it just. You're not making your team noticeably better. I don't right. think. I don't think it makes it any. I think it's the same yeah. team, honestly. And I I understand people who think Jalen's like or I think Beal's much better than Jalen. He's not. They're very comparable players. I think I, if you're trying to say it, it would be like okay, Beal on a better defensive team would not be as bad as he's been because I 
He's right. the one. I don't think he gets credit for being as bad as he is defensively. It's fine because guard defense doesn't matter in the slightest. And I know this because Trey Will- or Trey, Will- Trey Young and Lou Williams were playing conference finals fourth quarter minutes. Against the number one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can- against Jeff T. I've seen it with my own two eyes, man. So I was like, guard defense, that's canceled. Uh, <laughs> that, that's fucking out of here. Um, but I I could see the bit. So, okay. So Celtics had plus 4,000. You think they can get that kind of hot or? It would need, you'd need injuries to one of the two Nets best players. And really, really just Durant. If Durant's healthy, we. I was gonna say, I think yeah, <laughs> it's really just Durant. Um, and I don't know, I, like the Bucks going on a run here wouldn't surprise me. It really wouldn't. I've been yelling Bucks plus nine since I first. So I was like, I cannot believe they are tied for the fourth odds for a team that has Giannis. That's really all. That's really the only case I need. Two, they have like the rest of their team or the rest of their like core players back. Right. Three, like Bud's got the monkey. Bud coached a good finals. It is what it is. Yeah. I think he coached a good playoffs. It is what it is. The monkey's off his back. He's extended. And Giannis doesn't seem like the type that's going to show up. I'm like, oh, man, Giannis, 15 pounds overweight. He's a little doughy. Uh, you could tell he, hey, Giannis did not take the offseason seriously. Okay. Yeah. We come in, he's shooting 82% from the free throw line. It's like, well, we're, we're all fucked now, boys. Uh. I do think they fell into the trap a lot of teams who just win their first title, especially like basically mm. as a franchise. I know they had the the one back in the day, but this was essentially their first championship. Um, if it was it's a 50 years, like literally a generation like that. Right. Yeah. But they made the like. They just brought everyone back immediately. And like this isn't the Tampa Bay Bucks, like with it where it's still Brady <laughs> running the show. Like this is right. like I I love Bobby Portis. Is he gonna be hitting big shots again? Like maybe, but his history tells us probably not. Um but like I do think Drew I, I can't imagine like they won that finals with Drew largely playing for the other team for most of the first three rounds. Like he he, was yeah, a he, went to the Haw- he picked the, the fucking Hawk series. That's the one he went to turn into uh, Mr. 20 and 10. Because uh, I was like, when the Hawks, I was like, listen, Drew been playing like some bull, man. We might could sneak this. Nope. 28. Uh, <laughs> I think that's my case with the, it's, they figured out how to take Brooke Lopez off the court and still, like, they committed, like, Giannis at center. We saw right. that that was, like, the final step to unlock they got grace and allen for nothing which yep. it's like he's not great shakes but jesus like you're gonna give him grace and allen they're gonna get DiVincenzo back i think that i think chimmy's gonna play some pj tucker role for them i don't know mm-hmm. how well it's gonna work but just in that terms of like switchable at like strong enough to hold his own not a i think i feel like he's probably like an average 34 35 percent three-point shooter yeah he um, lives around there so I don't know if it'll work, but those are the risks you could take. I would have, I mean, one more, like P, like if they brought P.J. Tucker back or something, like they they let P.J. Tucker go for the luxury tax, which I thought was interesting. Not that I like P.J. Tucker's just great player you go into the luxury tax for, but you did finally fucking win. Like right. if ever there was a time to be like, P, let, let's run it back, man. Um, and they were like, we're all set. Yeah. We- so. Job well done. See you later. Yeah, you <laughs> enjoy Miami. Uh, we'll give you a letter of recommendation. <laughs> but yeah, I could see them. Nets are clear favorite, of course. The Warriors should not be this high. No, <laughs> that's just uh, it's bull. Is what it is. They should the, not be. I don't think the Sun should be this high either. Honestly, no. Like again, for fi- like this is for finals, not conference. Suns are fifteen hundred. Jazz are sixteen hundred. That's cap. Clippers sixteen hundred. No sir. Seventy no. sixers. No sir. Nuggets. Nuggets should be a little higher. I think the Nuggets should be a little higher. They're plus twenty two hundred right now. That's a little low. Your Miami Heat are after that. <laughs> and this is really the only one I wanted to get to. There is no world where the Mavericks should be over the Hawks. Respectfully, again or as us. a team, as a team, yeah. As a team, like the point 
of this, like to win the championship. This ain't who got the best player. This talk like route, basically route. And the Hawks have showed you they can get to the conference finals. They didn't do any fluke. Like they was out Hunter and Reddish. There wasn't no fluke shit beating New York uh, or Philly. So for the Hawks to be plus 3,500, Celtics 4,000, and the Haw- oh, excuse me, the Mavericks are plus 3,000. I mean, just throw the money under a bridge. <laughs> like, they second best player is still Kristaps Porzingis. That's the team. That's the team you put in plus respectfully. It's um, a heavy drop too. It's a deep yeah. drop from one to two, and that's speak both to Luca's greatness and yeah. Porzingis's midness. I think what also sucks. I feel like it's a sizable drop from two to three. Like who? Who's th- Tim Hardaway Jr.? I mean, listen, Tim Hardaway Jr. might be second now, but the drop from him. Yeah, yeah. we're really talking like actual (laughs) players that matter. Tim Hardaway Jr. is better than Chris Abs Porzingis. I would like for for only on the court with like contract doesn't matter. They're both signed. It is what it is. Yeah, I would take Tim Hardaway next season for sure over Porzingis. So, yup. Uh, They had. They got Reggie Bullock, which I like, but yeah, the Knicks were like, we're all set. Knicks were throwing. Knicks were handing out bags and said, uh, "We're we're all good, Reg." Uh, <laughs> doors on your left. Um. <laughs> yeah, I. That's Blazers, be- give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like the Bulls, I feel like should be a little higher than some of these teams. I uh, bull like these are only Eastern Conference. I still like Bucks four twenty five. Mm-hmm. The seventies. I need the seventy sixers to show they can get to the third round first. Like it, baby steps. They won't baby steps. Like listen, I think the Nets can get there. Bucks show they can get there. Heat, Hawks, Celtics. I need the Sixers to show. I don't think it's too much to ask. They disagree. <laughs> Western odds. I, don't, I still just. It's like, look, Lakers are overwhelming favorites, and it's like, really? And then I look at the rest of the teams, and it's like, eh. Yeah, like it. Warriors, yeah, Warriors are not winning four or three rounds to win the Western Conference. Suns, I don't – they got they got an uphill battle, I'll say. Though they did – they got Landry Shaman, I think, for like a draft pick maybe. I no did one, like that. No, no I don't – The listen. most underreported story in the NBA is no one wants Landry Shaman. I have – I again, he's either like a terrible guy – or he's got the worst medicals we've ever seen. Like he just he, he was born without like a C6 and a C7. Like he just a couple More vertebrae people short. Harry Giles than than Landry. Yeah, Shaman. Like, like I've never seen anything like it. But he goes to play, it was he went Philly to LA, LA to Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn to Phoenix. So like one pretty good he might be modern day Lou Will. Like pretty good Maybe. cities. Only playoff teams like it's we'll see where he goes after next year, but uh, so far, so good for him. Mm. The j- Jazz plus 750. No, Clipper. If you think Kawhi comes back by then, I don't, but no, if you, yeah, I, I, I just can't see it. I don't doesn't yeah. seem like it. Nuggets a little low, man, real low. Cause I Jamal, I could see coming back. Like yep. he, it don't he towards the end of the year. Kawhi's in the playoffs, but when you think about like how far the rounds are apart, I think it was like two months apart. Like I don't think that's an insignificant jump to your rehab. So if he gets going, they just resigned Aaron. What Aaron Gordon got four for ninety? No, I thought four? it was like eighty something. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right, ninety four. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was. It was. I remember thinking that's a lot of bucks. Uh, Frankie Smoke signs with the Mavericks. So they have a new third best player. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Luca and then four Knicks. <laughs> it's <laughs> listen, Dallas won the trade, like I said. Um Mavericks after the I mean the rest of the teams, it's you're not serious. Um, well, let, Mavericks, let me, Blazers. Let me say this if the Timberwolves get Ben Simmons, I think it works. Like I, I'm not necessarily saying they're bit, what do you think they give up? It, it works. Like with, it, be, it seems like it's D'Angelo, which I feel like I do that in a second if I'm the Timberwolves. On a heartbeat, um, I'm. I would try to. I throw him Beasley too. 
Like if yeah. I'm if I'm Philly, it'd be a tough scene to trade for D'Angelo Russell <laughs> and, and Malik Beasley. Uh, but yeah, no. If I'm Minnesota, if I can keep like the core is Ant, Cat, Ben Simmons. That's the three yeah. that I want to build with slash around. Ru- I mean, I know Russell is close with Cat. I don't know if he's also close with Simmons in a way where it'd be like, I don't want to be there if he's not. Um, but I do like the fit there. And if I'm the Timberwolves, I why not, dude? What do, I mean, come on, man. Like Roll the it's not gonna piss Towns off, which is already a, a one check. Although I don't even think Towns is the face of the franchise anymore, which is hard to say. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't disagree. I don't like I I maybe he need to be like like I've, I've long felt that way about Paul George. Like Paul George, great player with the Pacers. Like he needs to be the Pippen, and maybe not. Maybe <laughs> we saw what they blew three one lead when he was playing Pippen. <laughs> so shows what I know. Um, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, the rest. But of I team. I would do that. I if I'm the I think the Kings have a package to trade for Ben Simmons. Yeah, but like, would, does who wants to see that? Ben Simmons in Sacramento. Like, what does that do for the league? Because the the Kings have been adamant, like we're not giving up Fox, and they shouldn't. They absolutely Correct. shouldn't. But do you want to do you want to pair Fox with Ben Simmons? I don't know what that does either. I'd w- just that would be a nobody of that talent is signing here. Right. We just need that would like Halliburton helps. Davion, I think Davion Mitchell is going to help quite a bit because he'll just be able to defend like just that small guard. Simmons wouldn't even have to. Halliburton's a fine. I, I think he'll be a fine defender. Fox, he can be a fine defender. I would try to sell them on. I think Har- like Harrison Barnes would help the Sixers a lot. Like yeah, a you lot. can't trade Ben Simmons for Harrison Listen, Barnes like- and Buddy Hield <laughs> and Buddy Hield. And a, or I would say Bagley, I would throw like I would. Y'all want Bagley too? Take him. What possible value does uh, other than like salary in this trade? Like I, I still think there's a chance there, but I can't imagine if that's the best they can get for Ben Simmons. The, I, Listen, it's bleak. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's clearly bleak. <laughs> that's another. That's but this is another. I how I know Ben Simmons is not a, a biggest star. As maybe even he thinks he is, he wants to be traded, but we don't know the teams. Any the last the last however many people got traded, we know. We, I mean, we pretty much know where they're going to, but we get the list. We get the same list three four teams. Ben Simmons just like I just want out. Mm-mm, that's not you. Not a, you. Don't even think you're a superstar, man. You be like, nah, I'm I'm going. You say I'm going to L.A. Even if you don't end up there, you'd say you or whatever your top team is. I, I don't know. Like, hold on. So give me to Shanghai, man. Just get me out of here. <laughs> How many of these teams? I'm going to read the teams. No, actually, I'm going to act back out of the screen. Uh, <laughs> how many How many of these teams would trade their best player for Ben Simmons? Brooklyn Nets. Nope. Lakers. Depends who they think their best player is, but no. <laughs> Warriors. No. Bucks. Nope. Suns. I'll, I'll toss a maybe on that, but I, I lean no. Mm, I have Chris Paul uh, and his leadership <laughs> for uh, Ben Simmons in a first round pick. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, Jazz. straight up. <laughs> Jazz. No. Although, cool. maybe they should. Uh, Go Bear for Simmons, straight up. Go Bear and MB. <laughs> Twin foreign towers. Uh, <laughs> Two guys who be thick as thieves. Yeah. Um, Beats like Clippers. finally I can I can play the four. Um, yeah. I... <laughs> no. Clippers. Seventy six. No. Um. Nuggets. Oh. Heat. Riley Wood, but no. Mavericks. No. Hawks. No. Celtics. No. Portland. Maybe. Chicago. 
Only because he's in a contract year, maybe. New York Knicks. They should, yeah. I you didn't trade Randall for Simmons? I, I, yeah, I think that would probably be the better idea, yeah. That's nasty work guarding Philly, boy. You going home uh with some bruised ribs. Uh <laughs> Pelicans. You think Zion for Simmons would get any traction? The coming a homecoming uh, for for Ben Simmons back in Louisiana. Uh, they loved him at LSU. <laughs> people people who don't know that. That's what I All say. Part, they don't know LSU loved Ben Simmons. Yes, they do. You say it at every party. Um, yeah, I uh, no no. <laughs> Pacers. Is that Sabonis? Is that is that who that is? Yeah. 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 Then yeah. Hornets. No. Grizzlies. No. Raptors. Yeah. Wizards. No. Wolves. No. Kings. No, they've they've come out and said no. <laughs> Blatantly. Spurs. Keldon, who's there? Uh, no, it's DeJounte, right? I play probably, yeah, DeJounte. You said yeah or no? I don't know if Pop would. No, I don't think he wants to deal with Rich Paul. <laughs> <laughs> He'd eat his hat before he deal with Rich Paul. Uh, yeah, it's like, I'm out of here, dude. I got wine to drink. <laughs> Cavaliers. Who are these teams' best play? Like, who's the Cavs' best that's, player? That's the whole point. I would... Their best player right now, probably Sexton. I think Mobley's their best piece, though, but he's not yeah. their best player right now. Yeah, so I'm, I would agree. I would say for this only bet. So I would say, or Garland, Sexton or Garland, one of those. Unless you're a Laurie Markinen fan. Then now it's like, oh, can you do you think Simmons and, and Mobley can play together? Like it, it gets into that part of it. So. Well, the th- I think Simmons and Mobley can. I don't know if Simmons, Mobley, and Allen can. That's where. It, <laughs> Again, That's where you're wrong. We, That's, yeah, we can get two out of three. Uh, have some marketing and play in the one, but ca- uh, Pistons, like, would they trade Cade for Benson? I don't no. think they would. Yeah, Rock, no. Rock, Rock, would they trade Jalen Green for? They wouldn't trade anything for Benson. No. <laughs> uh, Thunder. I mean, they talked about it, but. I don't think they know what their timeline is yet, so I don't think getting older is, is the plan there. I, I'm also not sure if that's an upgrade. Um, projecting forward. Orlando Magic. Again, trying to think of, is their best player Jalen Suggs? Uh, Reverend Isaac, maybe. <laughs> He's healthy this year. Yeah, I, I, I suppose they could. Okay, that's the entirely. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe there were two yeses and like four maybes. Yeah, it's just not. And again, the the yeses were like the Cleveland, Indiana, San Antonio. So like, it's play like for sure that would trade for Ben Simmons, and it's like that's why I think he might end up one. Like if I'm, if I was the Spurs, I would trade for him. I would t- like you, Dejounte. Probably Derek White and maybe a pick. You might get even take like Lonnie. Like they just got all young, like young wings. Right. So if they were like, yeah, we'll still have Ben Simmons. We'll still have Keldon. We'll still have Primo. We'll still have Devin Bissell. Um, and we got like Simmons is our all star. So I think like the teams that say yes, there are some packages to be built, but. Is he going to go to San Antonio? Is he going to go to Cleveland, Sacramento? Because, again, these are the places that are saying yes. Yeah, it's, uh, as you said, bleak. Mm-mm. I can't imagine. I, you You remember when Ben Simmons was in the fourth quarter and uh, he was, uh, had a dunk and he didn't do it? He didn't dunk it? He didn't even attempt a shot. He passed it uh, out of, like, to the backcourt. Like. Hot potato. He passed it to the other person on the team who do not shoot or who doesn't shoot well. Uh, he looked at he looked at like M- MVP and B. Tobias Harris having a career year and Seth Curry. Uh, 
It was like Matisse. Uh, <laughs> nah, I don't know who's on. I don't know who's on the court there, but uh, just, where's Ish Smith? <laughs> um, where's Ja? <laughs> Maybe. Wait, what's the funniest place he could end up? Oof. I think it's. I think uh, it's comfortably Boston, but. I no nah, Orlando, him and Fultz. <laughs> or it's either him and Fultz together or Fultz goes back. I think that I think it's yeah. a win-win for me. Uh yeah. <laughs> I think him and him in Boston with Jalen and, and Tatum just running the East for the next 15 years would be very funny. I mean, you gonna have to come up off of uh Grant Williams and a couple second round picks or something. You think more just gonna Begrudgingly accept, yes. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I'm so ready for that. I've already. I don't know if you've heard. I've started hearing like the listen. Nobody's ready to go into a year uncomfortable like Daryl Morey. <laughs> like, is he? Word to him trading literally every person James Harden wanted to trade. <laughs> huh? Uh, <laughs> and then I heard <laughs> it was like, you, listen, this Houston regime either. They're not afraid to get uncomfortable with this John Wall situation. I said, they said that last year, and that lasted like seven games. <laughs> James Harden came in with a big belly, and they said, I, I can't take this no goddamn more. I'm like, that. yeah, no, no one's faster to acquiesce to, to light demands than, than the Houston. Um, like, I mean, honestly, I feel like that is legit some of the. It's just lost in analytics, like human relations, stuff like that. Um, like when Hinky would like trade or cut people, not even tell them like that, the human element right. of it. And so it's yeah, it's one thing to say, listen, we're, we can be uncomfortable, too. It's another thing when James Harden walks in, knock all the papers off your desk, eating a slice of birthday cake uh, <laughs> with no shirt. And it's like, I'm playing. I'm like starting. Tracy Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. He's. <laughs> I lost this leg in Vietnam. Uh, <laughs> uh, he does that I for mean, six games, and it's like nobody knows how to act, uh, interact with him, because uh, y'all got anal- y'all don't have no former, pl- y'all have no uh, Yadonis Haslam, y'all don't have no uh, Charles Oakley to be like, hey man, knock that shit off. Yeah. The, the the way they talked about how they cut Mello, they were just like mm. called Chris Joe Paul, Johnson too. Like, yeah, they were like, "How do you feel about Mello?" And he was like, "Well," and they were like, "All right, he's out of here." Like he didn't even get. They left. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We've already had him like, killed. What? what? <laughs> Nothing. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because like the human element too. It go. It's not even just the human element. It's a bad business. Like you cut right. those guys without telling them. Like they have agents, and then those agents right. aren't going to want their client. Like it's just you're not setting yourself up for any type of current or future success. What is so wild to me is that the agents also be hoeing the gms everybody hoes because it's it's like uh, hey listen if you don't if you don't uh draft evan mobley three i'm not gonna give you uh this five-star kid i got in high school and the gym's like what no no don't do no no please no uh every time i'm uh, josh <laughs> josh jackson uh, told Danny Ames like um, I don't want to play for the Celtics and he turned his plane around like, <laughs> in air like they didn't even land in Sacramento for the workout like they flew across country to watch him and he was like ah, I'm all set they're like well do, do a 180 with the bird we're out of yeah. here okay yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yes sir right. Mr. 18 year old <laughs> listen like the whole 17 year old Kobe, I'll go, I'll go play in Italy. Uh, and Calipari was like, ah, uh. <laughs> okay, I, it, I just think it's so funny that players like front office, all that everybody's willing to be tough until it actually comes down to it. And it's you got to look James Harden, who's making 40 million dollars, so you don't give a fuck about what you're saying, regardless, right. guaranteed. Uh, it's like, James, uh, you think you could be on practice, uh, come up to practice on time? Go fuck yourself. Okay, James. I'm going to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> lube? No lube? How would you like me to do it, sir? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> and then they go out and tell the media, we had a good meeting with James Harden. Sources say Rockets front office laid down the law. I think they were pretty firm with them. 
Um, that, was, that was the Dwight Howard, Stan Van Gundy, uh, uh, I can't call it a press conference, just when, when he put his arm around his shoulder and then drank his Diet Pepsi out of his own hand. He was like, I'll be yeah, that, that fatty. Yeah. Um, that was on my birthday, dude. What a what a. <laughs> I remember watching that shit and I was like, this is sick. It was like five minutes, prior, not even five in the same interview. Stan Van Gundy's like, yeah, no, nah, I pretty much had it confirmed to me that Dwight wants me out of here. You know, he's like, if, if they fire me, they fire me. But that's where I'm here. And Dwight's like, hey, what are we eating for lunch, coach? Uh, drinking a Pepsi. Uh. He just jiggled his tummy and walked away. But, and here's the thing. They fired Stan Van Gundy. I say that to say they're pussy every time, <laughs> every single time. I can't. I'm really trying to think of a time where a front off like stood up to it. We Sam or yeah, Paul George asked Sam Presley, Presley nicely. That was yeah. I don't even think that was a demand. Uh, he, yeah, of course, Paul. Definitely. <laughs> Look, they, John Wall has no leverage. <laughs> but, but he's also, I mean, actually, he because he's like, I'm not giving a dollar back. Um, no, sure won't. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll try to find trade partners for you. Nobody's going to trade for that. You can still come to training camp and not play and still collect checks. They're really laying down the law. Uh, <laughs> like, I just wonder if they're going to have trouble, you know, getting free agents with the way they're just being so harsh on guys well that's where i think angel's biggest fuck-ups came like i think he did such a good mm. job for so long and then at the end he just miscalculated like big yeah. miscalculations like i don't think acquiring kemba was a miscalculation i, I think it was a little knee jerky but i i understood it in the moment yeah but you can't turn around and try and trade him when he's hurt one year after you signed him to a max like that's terrible it's, just, it's bad business yeah yeah it's bad business it's like a no one wanted him b once he got the news then like this whole last year he's just like kind of floating around like does anyone want me here like his teammates love him and like it pisses right. off his teammates like that that's why i'm high on the celtics again for this upcoming season like i think they did a lot mm -hmm. of just rehabbing their own image internally. Like, no, we do want people here. We do like who we have here. We, we believe in this roster here. So I do think a lot of the moves they made weren't like, oh, we got this max free agent. Oh, we made this big right. trade. It was more like, hey, we need to focus inward before we can do anything else because it's just like mm. undo a lot of shit. And it, it started with like keeping Terry. Like, of course, you're not going to trade Kyrie with a year mm. left on his deal when he – Tells every one of your fans uh, <laughs> face to face. Oh, I'm staying. Uh, you can't, like, you can't with, trade with a kiss guy. in the mouth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't trade that guy. But they also seem to have no idea what to do with Terry. They're just like, yeah, some nights you'll play, some nights you won't. Uh, yeah. We're not going to try and trade you. Uh, it's, it's, we're going to tank your value on the. Open you like market. that, yeah. yeah. You like, yeah. You <laughs> and like he went on first take right when the season ended, and he was like. Fuck that place. Like, it's just <laughs> not good. Like, it was a bad time. And it hasn't, yeah. like, since since Jay Crowder was on the Celtics and the whole garden was cheering for mm -hmm. Gordon Hayward and booing Jay Crowder in the same game when we played the Jazz at home. Like, <laughs> that, it's been all, I can't say all downhill because we did make an Eastern, two Eastern Conference finals since then, but it's just mm -hmm. not... Not it wasn't an ideal way to handle these human relationships as as we're talking about, right? Uh, <laughs> like the Isaiah thing, I think yeah. it's overblown. I think anyone who wouldn't trade Isaiah for Kyrie is lying, just a fucking liar. Yeah, that. I mean. Also, I, I think the thing, the benefit with Ainge, like he already established. Listen, I'm playing dirty pool, baby. <laughs> right. Like, I don't care if you're on the operating table. Uh, <laughs> anybody can go. Hey, get well soon. Uh, in Sacramento, like they got doctors too. Um, shit, I was about to say something. No, it wasn't. Never okay. mind. Um, I say all that to say I don't know where Ben Simmons goes. Bleak, real bleak. It, oh, boy, oh boy. The Lakers are gonna trade fucking Westbrook for him. Like that's how this ends. Oh, yeah. Listen, it sets up perfectly. Westbrook next year is going to Portland, 
or Philadelphia. He's already been yeah. to Washington. He's already been traded for John. Like money wise, there's only f- so few people he can be traded for. Yeah. Unless you trade like nine people, like the Lakers traded nine, 14 people for him. West, tra- yeah. He'll be good in Portland. Uh, Russ and Embiid, I know they had some uh, some static, but I'm sure they'll be, the, I'm sure it'll probably be fine. Uh, <laughs> Gun to your head, House, who wins the 2022 NBA Finals? I feel like it. Not just even because the odds are in front of me, but I feel like the the Nets feel inevitable. But give me the Bucks. Mm. Fourth best odds. I if I had a bet right now, I would back out of the screen uh, again. But no, the Nets. I feel like they. It just seems like they solved a lot of their issues. Like DeAndre Jordan's just not there anymore. Marcus Aldridge has a heart now. Um, <laughs> like, again, respect, like, great news that he got cleared, but it was like six months ago, man. Like, it's like, I don't think he wasn't cleared to play when he got it. I think he just stepped away. Oh, he didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, I think that's, he okay, was that's like, fair. Because I, I think he could have kept playing, but he made the personal decision, like, let me not okay. fuck with me. Let me, oh, yeah, let me, yeah, let me yeah, back yeah. in first. <laughs> Let me actually do some research before I drink this horse dormer to fix my uh my bad my bum ticker. Uh <laughs> but they yeah, like DeAndre Jordan's out of there. They got oh no, they didn't. Kuzma's still in Washington, right? Yeah. Okay. I remember there was like a trick where he would end up going there, but it just feels like they I don't think James Harden gets hurt two years in a row. That just doesn't seem to be a James no. Harden thing. Kyrie is Kyrie. It just is what it is at this point. Durant, if he's healthy, he's no worse than the third best player on the planet. I don't think. I think absolute okay, worst. I was like, I was thinking that, and I was like, somebody's gonna yell LeBron James. I'm gonna say, okay. Um, so second, I think we can agree on a. Uh, listen, if he wore shoes that fit his feet, he might be. Like, he might be unquestioned number one. That's his what I mean. Like, his I think you got to give it to Giannis right now, and he yeah, he, he, he got the crown. Like, you don't have to give it to him; he took it. But yeah, like we're saying, if he if Durant's a centimeter back, that's <laughs> we're talking like, oh yeah, and that's for sure running this back. They didn't even have Kyrie and Harden last year, and they won. Like, yeah, yeah where Harden they have no hamstrings. He was out there like not jumping and still getting like double, like ten, ten, and eight. Uh, <laughs> And it's like, yeah, Jesus a very Christ. injured like, Harden is just prime Rondo. That's a very injured, and I say, it, but just an uncharacter. I was like, I've never seen Joe Harris shoot this bad in my life. Like, just a not a good series for Joe. No, I don't think that. I don't think that happens ever again. Um, no. So it, I mean, they're the favorite for a reason. I don't hate Lakers. I do hate Warriors. So many things have to go right. That I just don't anticipate for the Warriors. Yeah, I don't. What what would have to go? I think everything would have to go right for them to make like the conference finals. Yeah, but I think if they got there and things were going right, like they still have Steph Curry and they could win a series. Like that's mm. that's good enough. Like you're you're banking on a Clay Thompson we haven't seen in 17 years, uh, which kills me because I'm a huge Clay guy and it. It, sure. it sucked not to be able to watch him, but you're banking on that first and foremost, just for him to be. I mean, we talked about if we could see KD at 80%, Clay at 80%, still just running around Jack and threes. Like the shot, I have no <laughs> doubt on. But I mean, it's, it's like, probably down to what 40, 41% from deep. Like, uh, but it's like, who's, it's his, who's to say whoever be the same? Uh, is his defense going to be the same? Don't know. Like, he was a really good defender. Is that I can't bank on that being what it was. Um, you need Wiseman to take like a huge step uh, towards competence uh, and, and trust in his own coaching staff. Um, Big ask. Seemingly. One of the two rookies would have to not appear to be a rookie uh, the way they play, uh, whether it be Cum Bucket or they mm-hmm. took the guy out of Arkansas, right? Uh, Moza Moody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So if 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 one of those two is just like a day one rotation player, which feels like a big ask. Um, <laughs> so like you're asking like three huge things at the minimum just for them to be like, I don't understand why. They're this like do do they know something about Steph Curry? We don't like I don't. I I feel like it's that or they know something about like <laughs> Wiseman, Kuminga, and Moody going for like Bradley Beal that we are like going for right. Not Ben Simmons, no. Nah, uh, but yeah, plus nine hundred is it's hot. Um, yeah, the Jazz. I think, I think it's just tremendous. They had the best record in the West, and I I don't think anyone's concerned with the Jazz at all. Not to waste of time. Uh, again, respectfully, I don't think anybody's scared of the Suns either. Like no. they, I feel like they're kind of two years ago's heat. Like okay, like let's let's let, let's run it back, do it again, and we'll see. Um, the Heat did not, so <laughs> we'll see if the Suns do. Nuggets. Everybody else is. I think Nuggets could. If I were to pick someone from this second tier, it'd be the Nuggets. Yeah, Nuggets are. What's that? Uh, like eighth, ninth? Yeah, that's. I mean, they have the reigning MVP, Porter Jr. I feel like he's like Jamal Allen. I feel like this is his. He's been waiting on this, like yeah. a, just a chance to get like come into the season. Number two guy, Aaron Gordon was playing well. I I don't know about Jamal's recovery, but I figure there's a. Uh, Clemson has guys tearing Achilles and coming back for four months. So I just don't. I just don't know anymore. Um, I don't know if injuries, like... We're just done with injuries. I think so. I think they're canceled. Like, we're just past... And, and we, the gymnastics, he tore his Achilles and came back in five months in time to win a gold medal in the gymnastics. Gym, I can't think of a sport where you use your Achilles more. <laughs> then Jim Nash, Kobe Bryant <laughs> shot free throws with his kid with his foot hanging from uh, his leg. You're not, body. yeah, uh, pommel horse. You're not doing none of that. Uh, <laughs> mm -mm. I don't see it. So uh, HGH is actually good. Turns out is <laughs> as it would appear. Uh, <laughs> One, one last thing, and I'll let you go, as it is very late, and we're both very old men. Mm -hmm. um, Drake album. Thoughts? Well, I know you didn't listen to the one it's getting compared to um, uh -oh. in the press. Oh, like currently? Um, oh, yeah, heavens no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, it, it's fine. It, it very much, like Drake's really smart is what i'll say he's very yeah. smart he's very calculated although i thought leaking the andre 3000 song was a wild miscalculation on his behalf yeah who i never i thought kanye leaked that i think from what i've read and i've of course read it secondhand but he sent it to drake because it was like a diss at drake and so he was like i'm just dissing you and only you should hear it and then, and then drake, drake leaked it from there it, and, it's, it's corny behavior all around. Correct. Yeah. Um, I don't like, I've always felt Drake makes music for the moment and not necessarily mm -hmm. caring like how it sounds down the road. Mm -hmm. And he'll always have standout songs that la will last just because the incredible production and he says things that are pretty evergreen just in terms of hating women and liking money. Sure, sure. Um, but I mean, it's a lot of songs. A lot of songs. Like I, I made my cuts. I made my cuts down to five. Five keepers. Which? What did you keep? I didn't keep the intro because I really hate the first half of the instrumental. It, oh, disagree. I like, I like. Oh, it's the meat on left on that bone. I, oh. I, I understand. Well, fucking everyone else is eating the meat. So Freddie Gibbs is eating the meat. I saw Lupe, Lupe got some of that. Yeah, yeah Lupe <laughs> got the meat. Um, no, nah, that's but, I love that sample. I like the sample a lot, but I do think it doesn't need to. Have you heard the original? Mm -hmm. The um, what's the what's the R and B singer's name? Uh, Masigo, Masay. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Masigo, yeah, yeah. His cuts out when he starts singing, and there's just mm -hmm. like nice drum and and something ethereal behind him, and mm -hmm. then back to the hook, it comes back on. 
Mm. I like that a little bit. I I almost like can't like Drake voice is too soft to hear it on there. That's why I kind of like Freddie Gibbs and Lupe. It's like okay. Freddie Gibbs and Lupe. It's a bass but, in the voice. Yeah, I can't. I, like I truly, the first time I was listening to it, I was like, is he going? What? It's, it's yeah. fucking like Nav on, on Travis Scott's album. Like they didn't turn his vote. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so what yeah, what five did you get? Let me see. I kept uh both future songs. Sure. Back. Uh, let's see. Let's scroll to the bottom here. You only live twice. Mm. So Wayne and um and Rick Ross. And Rick Ross. Uh Knife Talk. Mm. Project Pat, who if I know who Project Pat is, the rest of Twitter should. Like, that's inexcusable. Yeah, listen, that, is, that, that, is that was a... sacrilege. And his uh, his time and place track that he he's always good for, the 7 a.m. Mm. Um, uh, brittle. Bridal Pat. Yeah, Bridal, Bridal, Bridal Pat. Bridal, yeah. uh, so those five, the two future, the knife talk, 7 a.m., and you only live twice. Uh, I made my cuts last week. And of, let's see. Yep, it's 21 songs. I kept 20. I really yeah. like this. I really like this album. Okay. Uh, and again, I always what did like Drake. <laughs> uh, song with Kid Cudi. Okay, yeah. Not a fan. Um, no. Like, I, the bridal path, I, I like it. It's fine. I kept it. But I like the intro. I really like Poppy's Home. Uh, in the Bible with Dirk is really good. The Jay Z is man. The Travis songs okay. Way too sexy. In too deep. TSU is good. Race my mind. Fountains get along better. You only live twice. That's that's the the run for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, did you skip? You skipped over the little baby song. With uh, I like that. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. That song stinks. It's not good. I, I like Baby's Burst is fine, but it's not a good song. Um, I mean, he Cam. When did Cameron say uh, you don't like men? Me neither. What that was like? Oh six. That's what I'm saying. So this this is you can barely even like talk that in as like a throwaway bar anymore. Nonetheless, make a whole song. Uh, right. Right. So yeah, that one. Could but even then, like if I like cut the songs I'm I'm wavering on I I think I'd I'd keep like fifty I really like yeah, this 14, I, 15. I think I think the thing that Drake is really good at one he gets the best features because he's Drake yep the features they always show up because he's Drake yep but he also like Tim's uh, Yeba Giveon he'll also like he can also still get any young person because he's Drake correct. He can go get a project pet, and I feel like all the like Ty Dollar Sign killed his Wayne sound like 08 Wayne. Yeah, the the stretch Wayne's been on this whole year. I mean, I know you don't listen. He to, might uh, he might be back. I've I've been sitting on a take that we should start including 21 with his his run. Like it, it's mm. it's like 04 to 11 gap 21. <laughs> like that's his run. <laughs> Like uh, like FDR or uh, who's yeah. a <laughs> non consecutive time. <laughs> uh, no, he's it's one of those like hmm, Wayne sounds bad. I feel like I've said that like four straight songs now, for, like four yeah, straight the, verses of Wayne. The Nicki um, Minaj one, the Scene Green. Um, hmm. I got all these right fucking here. He was on the um, he was on West Side Guns album. He killed that feature. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like it's been like, oh, he's on Tyler the Creator's album. He smashed that. Um, yeah, he just, yeah, he had missed in oh, some time now. You know, and even year. yeah, he's he might be back. So I I like the features. I also I think this is one of Drake's best features that he like is just willing to give somebody the song, like. Uh, Yeba's heartbreak, like he'll just give somebody either an interlude, like Fountains is a Tim song, which is fine. You Only Live Twice is a Wayne and Ross song, yep. In Too Deep, especially the second half, is a future song. 
Like, I think he's he's very willing to like concede the spot like for way too sexy. He's like, man, let me let me get my verse out the way early. Uh, I'll get the memes and stuff going, and then we'll yeah. kick it to the heavy hitters. So I think that's his bet. I don't know, like humility, or if he's just like I'm seeing the bigger picture. Like it just. Well, see, I think I don't think he does it out of humility. I think he does. Yeah, it that's why I was like, that doesn't sound very right. self serving Because yeah. like we're sitting here, like you're sitting here, you're like, I really like this album, and then I'm like, oh yeah, what parts do you like? All the non Drake parts. Like yeah, that. <laughs> listen, I think he, he's got a great ear, and I I don't think it's a coincidence that. The album that I go back to for Drake, probably the most, is still More Life. And that was the one like the playlist curated. Really? Because again, he's a Drake is a spot as a feature, kills it. Whatever you yeah. need, kills it. He always gets the best production, the best features, and he's good as a spot, like singer or rapper. So I like less of Drake is more of Drake. Definitely. I, I agree wholeheartedly with it. And the the debate that's been happening between Kanye and Drake is the wrong debate. Neither of them, well, Kanye looks bad for different reasons. Musically, yeah. neither <laughs> of them look bad. One person yeah. looks bad, and it's DJ Khaled. Both of these guys <laughs> made better DJ Khaled albums than DJ Khaled's ever yeah. been. Listen, the boy, he had, I was going to say he had a good run, but I, it's just one of those, I don't think I've ever listened to a full DJ count, like for that exact, I just don't like the, it's 20 songs. There are four different artists who have never met and never recorded like us, like Wayne and Ross been doing songs together for how long? Like that's just, Drake's not necessary. He pops up. They just, they, they was playing ball at his court, but he's, he wasn't needed to win the game. Right. Um, Again, like he passed it off to dollar sign. I think that's his biggest like uh strength. Like the 7 a.m. on Bridal, I think that's probably my maybe my least favorite date and time. And it's still fine, but when I see when I see a 9 a.m. in Dallas or Toronto, like I expect some snapping, snapping. He was fine, but I didn't hear Yeah, that. I mean, I th- I thought he just like really f- I thought he floated on the beat like very mm. well. So it was more flow and and instrumental than necessarily what he was saying that i was like i, I put it in i don't think it's the best <laughs> less of drake is more of drake. Yeah. exactly yeah i don't think it's the best he's done for time and place but i do think it's mm. in the middle somewhere yeah as i mean again i like all this project like the test will be six months in six months from now what am i running right. but it's been out uh, september th- so two weeks i've it's one of those I go to a different song every day, but if I go to a song, I usually just let it run from there. And no, this is a, I think it's a good, I think it'll have some staying power. We'll see. But the beauty of Drake, he's like, listen, if it doesn't, fuck it. We'll, <laughs> we'll get it next time. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's what I mean. He, he, he also has this great trick he plays where he's like, man, I haven't dropped an album in a long time. And you, you agree. And then you look back, it's like, you had, the Dark Lane demos last year. You had more life the year before that. You had you do more features album. than anybody on this planet. Like right, like you're always around. But he's like, man, I, I'm an album mode. You're always in fucking album. Mode. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Yeah. Now listen, Wash King. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, he yeah, is a exactly. Wash King. That's exactly uh, what it is. It's, he's very smart. He's very smart. He, I'll give he's him brilliant for that. Um. But yeah, even you're talking about like let's let's let me check back in in six months, and it's like I there's there's a lot of I think if outside were more open, I'd probably mm. be in the twelve somewhere in the twelve to thirteen range. But yeah, these five I'm I'm thrilled with. Like I keep going back to Tyler's album. That's that's one of my favorites this year. Mm. Um, that's what I started and remember. It's one of like I I think I got to the middle of it. And it's like, I can't remember where I stopped, so I just need to listen to the whole thing over. But I just haven't listened yeah. to the whole thing over yet. But I remember, yeah. like, the first half, I was like, yeah, he just gets better. He just doesn't get Every worse time. at this. Yeah. I think his his second verse on the last track, Safari, I think his second verse. On oh, yes, yeah, I ain't got that far yet. I think that's that's my verse of the year so far. Where it's September 16th, I think that's my verse of the year. Mm. It's, 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 it's big, I've made it talk, like. He's like, I'm I'm here now. Like I I've done the R and B, I've done alternative, I've done uh, horrorcore, and now I'm the best rapper alive. Like that, it feels like. And I produce too, and my shit's fire. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it feels like because I mean it's a it's a gangster girl, so it it hmm. very much feels like 
he tried to pay homage to a bunch of the gangster girls he had listened to, obviously Pharrell influence. Mm. But to me, it reminded me of um, when Wayne went from Georgia Bush to um, Ambitions as a Rider uh, mm. at the end of, of, of two, of um, mm. Dedication the, two. Or, uh, yeah. Because mm. he does the first half of Safari in a different voice. Like he does it in the pitched okay. up voice. And then the, he lets the instrumental breathe. Drama says some things as he's one to do. And uh, then he just comes in with like one of the best verses I've like of, of he's ever spit. And it's just elite shit talking, like true, like unlike rapping he's ever done before. And he does really like he, he holds his own throughout this whole album. Yeah, he. I feel like that's the thing. He, you wouldn't think of him as a rapper, but when he's on tracks with rappers, he holds every single time. Every single time he holds, if not wins. Um, he, he just came out with a or Max O Cream put out a track with Tyler as the feature, and he smashes hmm. that like not a duo I anticipated seeing ever in my life, and <laughs> it, it works. Like he, he gives a fuck about music, and it that's that's where it's like, yeah, I'd rather give this guy my ears than. Like Drake to me always just makes disposable music, like intentionally. Right. Like he's like, yeah. Like when he when he gets the champagne poetry beat, I think he knows like, oh, other rappers are like zero to one hundred. Uh, oh, one hundred percent. Listen, every album cover he's done, back to what has been like memeable. Him sitting mm -hmm. on, he knew people was gonna meme that. Way too sexy. Uh, I can't remember this, uh, the song with Future where they're working in the fast food restaurant like he yeah. i think that's the actor in him honestly he's like i'm it's that's all a role yeah i'll make an ass out of myself it's it's good for the brand like we, if i i can we, be a gift or a me or whatever that's a good thing we've talked about uh i mean i feel like he does it at raptors games like he's like a camera could see mm -hmm. this. Like, durant's hurt let me act like I'm yeah oh boy Lord, let me rub nick nurse's shoulders uh yeah he's <laughs> he's like because he's i think he's thinking i only need one of these things to hit Right, like only one of these things to hit, and it's like, oh, did you see Drake rubbing Nick Nurse's shoulder? He's like, got him again. Exactly. Now they know yeah, I'm exactly. in album mode. Uh, Let me airball at a Kentucky layup line like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. If he swishes that shot, we don't remember it. Now I'm no. not saying he, I'm not saying he missed it on purpose. I think his jumper's really broke, but <laughs> I do think like him airballing it, good for the brand. Like, yeah. I feel like I feel like all his shit is like a i feel like he's actor first i feel like everything he does goes from actor now he likes to rap he can sing but i feel like it's and that's why i feel like everything he does is so like billboard billboards in different countries he had yeah. that going viral every single brand was doing the pregnant woman emoji putting whatever on it right he had that shit going viral so that Kawhi. all the all 21 of his songs are the top 21 songs streaming on Spotify and Apple Music. Right. By design. My question is, can anybody else get in on this? Like, why is nobody else getting ghostwriting uh, uh, reference tracks? Like, what? How is he the only one getting this? I, I don't know. He got. He's like the Phoenix Suns uh, training staff. It's like, how is nobody, <laughs> how's nobody just been like, listen, 40 Quentin, whoever, what'll it like? What's it gonna take? Y'all clearly got the recipe. Yeah, it it doesn't seem too hard to copy, but no one does it. It's one of I think he he just gets like he pays enough for top tier. Like his production, I think it just sounds different. It always sounds so much like clearer, yeah. crisp. Yeah. yeah, every note. Yeah. It's like they not this ain't Fruity Loops. Like they no. <laughs> 40 ain't touch fruity loops in some time. Uh I imagine. But yeah, I feel like it's all part of the like it's the production, right? Drake right. is playing the long game. This is all part of the production. If I gotta I'll host an award show and I'll go on Saturday night live and I'll <laughs> destroy Meek Mill and Get my teeth kicked in my push of tea. It's all <laughs> part of the production. Uh, but even that plays like he got his teeth so thoroughly kicked in. It's like it was like Daffy Duck's bill. Like it spun all the way around, <laughs> right back in place. Like all those fans <laughs> yeah. were like, "Well, what can you do?" <laughs> yeah, it, I'm, it's such an ass whooping. It's like, oh, this was so out. Like, what? Well, I mean, come on, man. 
Like what? Uh, yeah, they of course Alabama won sixty to zero. Like, come on, man, we're not impressed <laughs> with that. Like, he's whooping his ass real good. <laughs> uh, of course, Tua can throw to four first round picks. Like, big whoop, <laughs> <laughs> right? But I, that's just my like. Listen, y'all need to be getting some of these reference tracks. Some of these, uh, like these, I feel like earworms. That's what he wants, and that's what this album has been for me: earworms. And yeah. Definitely, if it outside was open, open, I even feel like this album would sound differently if he knew outside was. I feel like Probably. it'd be more. There's no like bangers on this, like in right, too deep right. or way too sexy, like but like bangers, bangers, like over. Um, some of the, any song he did with Lil Wayne for like a five year run, right? And if he knew like next album mode, I think he's in album mode. Um, <laughs> Next, like if we're back out, it'll, it'll probably be twelve bangers, just no, right. thirty six bangers, because he wants the clicks, but nothing but bangers. This guy, yeah, he's we we've talked before. Like no one knows the internet like Lil Nas X. I think that's underselling Drake a little bit. Yeah, I think and it's not to take away yeah. from Lil Nas X, who very nah, much understands the internet on on a it's a different level. Like he's a he's a poster. He's a true yeah. poster. I think that's the Drake has the good team. Lil Nas said he got it out the mud. Like he he has a great team now, but he like I've never heard a Lil Nas X album. But I'm interested. What ha- like this pregnant shit? I want to know what happens. Right. I want to know what happens for because I want to know Boosie's like cause of death. Like when <laughs> boys having babies. Uh, <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Boosie to, to make it full circle, Boosie is the the non joke version of Norm Macdonald being like, "I'm telling you, I'm not gay." Like that's <laughs> a, that's Boosie very much every day. He's like, "Why does everyone keep assuming?" I- <laughs> well, I mean, you got a chain that says "Bussy" on this. <laughs> got this when I was sixteen. <laughs> oh yeah, my boy, gay that one. No one's gay at sixteen. <laughs> Yeah, he. I don't know, but ju- I just know whatever happens, and I'm. Pr- I, he's not gonna. Uh, you don't even dignify it. But if he just named the baby Boosie, I just think it, like his just head would just explode. Like a, uh, uh <laughs> Chappelle show the white. Supr- I can't think of the writer's yeah. name. The uh, uh, his head explodes. Yeah, Neil <laughs> Neil Brennan. That's how it would be, uh, if he found that out. So. Salute to a good team, man. Like the the shoe they had the devil shoe. Oh my yeah. lord, people were furious. Yeah, N- Nike was like, we got to put out many statements. Yeah. <laughs> and again, people are gonna remember that for like, oh, I don't. That's that devil boy with that shoe. But you know who he is. Yep. You know exactly who he is. You'll never forget. I was like, oh, is that the boy with the no? It's a little nonsense. Like you're not going. <laughs> you're for certain. What? What uh who was that running back that killed his wife in the way <laughs> was that Marcus Allen? Uh, <laughs> uh USC Reggie Bush was that Wendell <laughs> White? Uh Ricky Waters. Um no, you you remember exactly who uh allegedly uh <laughs> yeah uh you know what I mean? But <laughs> I'm going to go out right there before uh, I know OJ does his best work in the dark. Yeah, and OJ and Boosie tag teaming. Um, oh, I mean that both ways. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, Judd Nikki pointed this out, and I think there's some merit to it. She just she said, how tall is Lil Boosie? How tall is Lil Nas X? And somebody posted, Boosie's like 5'6", Lil Nas X is like 6'1", 6'2". She's like, I'm not saying it's the full thing. There's something there, and I'm Definitely. like, that might be bigger than the get like height. <laughs> oh man, like man, he can't say, man. I wish he was. I wish I was six two. So he just like, Ugh, boys, Ugh. like <laughs> butt stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <Icky. laughs> Um, no, the Mick man, you are appreciated. I love you, pal. Always good to rap with you. It'll never happen again. So I hope the people uh, it, no uh, last time. <laughs> no, I love you too, pal. It's always a pleasure. 
And uh, yeah, RP Norm. We'll catch you next time. I mean, the next time somebody famous dies, mm-hmm. um, maybe we'll be there. Maybe not. See you.